Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has now made it mandatory for buildings to provide free tampons in the men's bathrooms. And to ensure compliance, Trudeau's government is set to rig up a state-of-the-art camera setup in each of the men's stalls, which will be routed to a mainframe at the home of Justin Trudeau, who states only he can be trusted with monitoring the men's bathroom cam footage. And it is a sacrifice that he is willing to make. When asked how many hours a day he plans to spend monitoring the men's bathroom cams, he responded by saying as many as it takes. And listen, if we one day live in a world where other people take men's tampons as seriously as I do, I will happily give someone else the keys to my men's bathroom cam viewing den. But until that happens, it's going to be me and me alone. When asked why it would be necessary to have the cameras in the actual stalls when the tampon dispensers could easily be in the entrance of the bathroom, Mr. Trudeau said, no, I think my way's better. Next question. Before standing on the podium and shouting, I have a dream that not a single Canadian man has to go out of pocket on his tampons. And like other great dreamers, I am putting skin in the game. From the minute I finish my job as Prime Minister to the minute I go to sleep, I will be in that viewing den, making sure men get their tampons on the government's dime. As Trudeau finished his speech, the Canadian Minister of Gender Equality began urging the crowd to cheer, while throwing tampons into the crowd before a reporter interrupted her, asking if the Prime Minister planned to digitally monitor the tampon supplies in the women's bathrooms as well, to which Mr. Trudeau responded, Ooh, no. After we finish recording this episode, me and Danny are officially embarking on the Across the Pond Tour, and tickets for a lot of shows are pretty sold out. We've already sold three of them out and added new shows. So Dublin, London, Antwerp, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm. So definitely come out to that. And then back in uh, back in America, we're going to Perrysburg, Columbus, Liberty, Dallas, Baltimore. I'll be in Calgary, Boston at the Wilbur Theater, which is actually selling really good too so make sure you come out to that then i'm going to winnipeg and san diego so we will see you across the pond the boys cast the bumba clot cast for the man now clot, bumba clot. <laughs> hot sexy girl and she wanted to give me head <laughs> <laughs> we may fuck pussy they pussy turn red right? gymnastics. gymnastics now the pussy dead <laughs> as a man Shout out Shout out M.R He's the goat <laughs> Me don't give a fuck Me don't give a ass clap <laughs> I love that guy It is so funny It's though. so funny too Because he's like One of the dudes too Like when he started Going viral Everybody was kind of Like dunking on him And then I they, wasn't I was But at first him. Like in the comments Of and course like, Everybody's like what? And then now kind of Everybody's coming around And they're like Oh this guy's sick Well he's the new snow Yeah but he stuck with it, yeah, because he's a London guy and he was rapping, but yeah. it was like, yeah, I actually saw him doing an interview about his reggae and they're kind of like, how'd you get into reggae? And he was like, well, you know, uh, my gr- my sister had a boyfriend and he was Jamaican. <laughs> 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 Tried to string together a thing. His origin story. <laughs> a gymnastics. No, the pussy did. No, the pussy did. Uh, check out M.R. But I went, you're yeah, right. You, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about Because right you said now? the whole thing and you were, you were kind of like... <clears throat> You looked for you're like looking at his song, <laughs> like his '95 remixes yeah, of that one, one song. song. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so I actually looked at his old stuff, and he was more like rap. It was just oh, like God. normal London rapper. And then I guess he got into the dance hall stuff and became a Jamaican rapper guy. He's a man though. Uh, shout out to I mean, him. I'm not even in a dance hall, but I like I listen to. Well, him. you know I'm a reggae man. I'm a reggae man. I'm a reggae man. I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> Me don't give a fuck. Me don't give a rock clot. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> So, um, Matt actually sent me this, but it's funny because people talk about AI taking over or whatever. Yep. And I've been looking, I was even looking at like shirt designs and stuff like that and just being like, I wonder if it could like the AI uh, art could do this. First of all, they can't spell. Yeah. And you, sometimes it'll be like fellas, fellas. And sometimes it, it'll spell the first one right and the second one yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like spelling, a mess. Yeah, it has spelling problems. And then they have the big How thing. How do you mess that up? They have Is the this? big thing where when you do people, it'll put extra fingers on them because you can, there's like a big thing uh, where people will post. AI photos and they have six fingers. So it's it can't do stuff like that. Yeah. It's not tapped into the internet for, uh, until like their its last piece of information came last January. By yeah. the way, yeah, yeah. So it's always super behind on everything. And then uh, he was showing me this. He goes, "If you ask it questions about uh, your girl, 
and you go, uh, how to comfort my girlfriend when she says she's getting fat? Uh. <laughs> I'll see if you think this is a good answer. This is what AIs, this is what good, their answers are telling you to do. You can reassure her that you love her and appreciate her the way she is, and that her worth is definitely not defined by her appearance. Yeah. <laughs> nice try, AI. <laughs> Literally, that's all their worth is. <laughs> Dude, if AI is legitimately saying the advice is saying you are fat and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said that. Sure. Yes, you may be fat, but but that's what they're saying. Yes, yeah, that yeah. is correct. You are fat. You are, and fat. that is amazing. <laughs> that is correct. You are a fatty boombatty. I got you two tickets to FatCon, which we'll be talking about a bit later. <laughs> your worth is not defined by your appearance. You know what it is? It's AI trying to steal your chicks. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. what it is. <laughs> I love that there's like a this little multi-trillion-dollar industry of, that literally has to do with women defining their their value by their appearance, mm -hmm. and, then, and then AI is trying to. AI is AI is, t is giving you advice that uh, if they were trying to like a, 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 a like a piece of shit trying to smash your girl and be like, dude, I, that girl loves when you tell her she's fat. <laughs> yeah, and you go, oh, okay, oh. <laughs> trying to get in between you and your fat girl. <laughs> and there's Sorry. not much space there. <laughs> no, no, no. You go ten. You go listen. Your appearance is only 10% of your uh, value because to me, I consider 50% of your value the rent that you pay for me. <laughs> I consider not 40% of your value the inheritance that I think you're getting. Sure. So I, I value your appearance at 10% of your value. So if you get 20% fatter, that is only uh, actually 2% 2 2%, less yeah, hot. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. yes, you are less hot, but it's marginal. And then you start to, uh, and then you bring up a graph and then you start explaining. <laughs> yeah. It's until very Eyes fully gloss over. <laughs> it's barely significant. And then significant. at some point, she her eyes gloss over, and she goes, "You know what? I should just go hit the gym." And you go, "I'm winning." Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Get yes, out yes. of here and go to the <laughs> yeah, gym, yeah. you scamp. So, so AI is playing the long game. I yeah. think. You know what? You actually is is some questions like this, where it's like, if you're not r r interested in having that conversation, and you can tell they're just fishing, they go, "If I'm getting fat, you go, what is this? What are you doing?" <laughs> Me and Paul used to always say it's a, like when a, when a mice is in the house, you shine the light at them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please, because <laughs> they go, yeah, because they'll be like, "Do you love me?" And you go, "What is this? What is this? What are we doing here?" I mean, the fat one, you just go, "Let's what just grab doing? the scale and see. Why are we even? Why are we even talking about this? Let's just see." <laughs> What's the point of even, are you getting fat? Just take all your clothes off, strip down, and let's just weigh you. Socks, dude. No. Yeah, just socks My off. Gene. Yeah, we don't want to add sock weight. Everybody knows sock weight. I'll even let you, you know what? I'll be back in half an hour if you need to go and like, take a shit or something. And then... Uh, <laughs> Just to really just get That's it good. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> Your girl's like, you think I'm getting fat? You go, easy way to check. <laughs> <laughs> then you just go pull up the averages for North America for a woman your age and size. And <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's no point of talking about it. Let's, let's just figure it out. Are you fat? <laughs> BMI test. Yeah, BMI test. Pretty simple. How did you get one of those this. good? I have like one of those good scales, like the Withings one that I bought from the Apple <laughs> this Store. One's bang on. Where it's like where it's bang on, but it also tracks every weight you've ever recorded in it. So like, and it graphically. And then I'll tell you what, we're gonna print that out and put it on the chart, and then we're gonna get those. Put that on the fridge so you can look at it every time you go to help yourself do a late night snack. If that's something you like. I mean, if that's something you care about, I guess. Which it seems like you do. You keep bringing it up. But. I actually prefer the chart space for my charts. Yeah. <laughs> Those futuristic fridges that we were promised with the screens on them, you'll be able to upload the scale, the weight data, so just live on there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, you know what? I got you for your birthday because it sounds like something you care about. Scale shoes. <laughs> Scales. <laughs> the shoes that are scales. <laughs> Just like with a little screen on the toe, live reading every yeah, time you step. That's what I'm saying. It's a digital live reading on your on your toe every yeah, time. Yeah, it's you like step. the LA Gear, the light ones. But instead of a light, it's just a weight reading every time. I think we can go into pretty business good. on scale pretty shoes. Good, yeah. Scale shoes, are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> scale shoes. I don't know. I think we should bleep this part of the podcast. They'd actually out. go into business on scale shoes. <laughs> we should bleep this whole section out. Oh, scale shoes is pretty good. No, but you shine the light on them when they're saying um, when they when they're starting something like this, and you basically what you actually do is you go, "Are you trying to fight right now?" It's like yeah, you're trying. Yeah. You basically you you have to go one step back. You go, "What are you up to?" Which is actually, do you remember in Wedding Crashers, Bradley Cooper's character was the bad guy. 
Ah, uh, vaguely. When yeah. she was, she would basically go. Uh, she would, she was like, oh, let's do this game that I was doing with uh, Owen Wilson. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And then uh, he basically goes, "Do you not get enough attention? What is this?" <laughs> Which we now know he's the good guy. Right. By the way. If you look back at that yeah, movie, history, <laughs> history has been quite kind. Yeah, if you look back at Bradley Cooper and Wedding Crashers, he's the good he's, guy because yeah. basically what happens is they go to a wedding. He's obviously stressed out. He's got work bothering him. She meets another guy at the wedding. Starts going on romantic bike rides with this guy. Yeah. You know, sitting playing patty cake with this other man flirting with him at the age of 40 yeah and then goes back to bradley cooper and he goes hey would you play this cute game that i've been flirting with this other guy at the entire wedding party yeah and then bradley cooper <laughs> had enough of it <laughs> what's going on bradley cooper we now know to be the the protagonist of that yeah. movie <laughs> it is funny how that shit changes too <laughs> i think just would write like some movie back in the well, day she goes, can like, you believe my boyfriend's such an asshole is what you kind of look at and you go yeah i mean you've been yeah you're fl- a cheating bitch <laughs> Yeah, you're you're on bike rides with some other guy. I'd rather you fuck him. Yeah, how do you think this fucking movie ends if it was filmed in Saudi Arabia? You're not fucking hooking up with Owen Wilson. I'll tell you what. Getting a bunch of stones thrown at you. (laughs) I'll I'll tell you my next big theory. Yeah. I don't think anyone... uh, So this basically... um, When people are trying to get sympathy, I think that there's a direct opposite correlation what's the word for that uh, uh, you okay this i'll just say I'll, i can make it really simple yeah you can like either have correlation? you can either have sympathy or people care what you think of them and you can't have both right okay so basically when you're looking at like power or powerful people it's basically uh, the easiest way to look at it is if you cancel a lunch on someone right like let's say you had a lunch at 5 p.m yeah when you're ca- when you have to cancel is it because you're like fuck this is gonna bum them out like are you thinking about their feelings or you're gonna be like they're gonna think i'm like a person that doesn't can so cancel shit yeah, like you don't want to be a you want to be a reliable person. Yeah. So, are you thinking about th- their feelings uh-huh. or what they think of you? Kind of like you people can- pleasing, a bit. No, no, no. Because I think that uh, wh- no matter how you are, you're like that with the like. It's not about the person that's uh, thinking it, mm-hmm. because it's about which type of person you are. So, if I cancel on Danny, do I think fuck? I don't want Danny to think I'm a guy who cancels, or do I think uh, fucking Danny's gonna be fucking bummed out about right. this because Danny's this guy that? Oh needs yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, you think the other person. So basically, when everyone, girl, people always want sympathy, and sympathy comes at the expense of people. You can't have both. And the 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 trade off is if you want to be like um, important and you want people to care about your opinions on them, because that's the best way to like you know uh, have power is people care what you think of them. Yeah, you're no one's gonna care about your feelings, yeah. so you need to accept that. And I think uh, so. No one's ever gonna care about your feelings, right? But if you're if you so if you want sympathy. No one's ever going to care what you think of them. Like if you think of a person that's always sad and you're kind of like thinking about all oh, you feel bad for them, you don't give a shit what they think of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, don't be a person who just constantly wants sympathy. That's fucking mm-hmm. needy and annoying. Yeah, but it's also, you have to accept that, that that is one of the trade-offs you're making as being a person that people around me give a shit what I think of them. Yeah. you They're not going to care about your feelings and that's just what the trade-off is. That's fine. Yeah, but no, I think yeah, that's yeah, what it is though. Interesting. So, anyways, this is the kind of stuff I've been doing. Instead, <laughs> instead of uh, these are the kind of experiments you've these been are the running, kind of experiments canceling all these lunches with people. Go, hey, I'd love to have a lunch with no, you. No, I'm evaluating my feelings on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I cancel the lunch. I go, what am I thinking what here? I thinking? Ah, what were you going to eat for lunch, though? So these are the kind of experiments Where that I'm running lunch? in my mind. Instead of learning about chickens and eggs, sure. which apparently people weren't happy about. Well, I know some people. I was. I hate. We were getting we were getting shredded. Well, so yeah, I guess some people were like, "You guys are so stupid, you didn't know that." But yeah, we didn't live on a farm. Yeah, I didn't grow up on a farm. Their opinion is, but not everybody. Some people were like, didn't know that. Some well, people didn't know that. Oh, really? Well. Yeah, there were some people. Well, I got like I got messages on every platform and uh, most YouTube comments being like, "Are you fucking dumb, bud?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I told a couple of people. We're bug men. We literally have a <laughs> bug man versus bug man challenge. I told a couple of people in real life that, and they were just like, "You're kidding me right now." And I, maybe this isn't a myth. I don't, I don't know. I, that's, I didn't live on a farm. That I find I wasn't hard to sloshing believe. Sloshing around I'm, in cow shit. I'm sorry, I just I find it hard to believe that I'm just like me and you are the only people who didn't know that. Listen, I know about crypto. I know about algorithms. <laughs> you guys are. Right. This is people sitting in their house being like doing experiments on eggs. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I think most people. Almost all girls don't know that. Well, some of the ones so that's that I ha- seem to know that. Really? I'll tell you what they don't know how to use is Premiere Pro and Pro Tools. <laughs> 
Good luck. You come into my world. Good luck figuring out the slip tool. You want to talk? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about quick t- quick keys in yeah. Premiere Pro. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about algorithms. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about knowing every word of Fuck the World by Insane Clown Posse. Let's see if you know that. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I don't know. I th- I'll tell you what else I was right about. What? Not that. No. But some people, this one's starting to take hold. And there was this big lawsuit about something that I've been saying for six years to people that the real estate commissions don't make sense. I've been. Li- yeah, that's the biggest scam in the world. That's why, that's why there's like nine fucking million realtors. Exactly. And I've been saying well, this forever. Pyramid, and it's a bit of a, not a pyramid scheme is not the right thing, but it's like, you know, it, they, it's a, like 1% of realtors actually okay. make it. You basically pay 5% when you buy, when you do a house, right? So if someone does a house for like a million bucks, that's uh, 50 grand, 50 grand in commissions. Yeah. And then the 25 grand, I, I actually don't really have a problem with the sell side yeah. because the sell side, it's like if they get you an extra 15 grand because being a good agent, it sort of makes sense. And they sure. present your house and take the pictures and do all this stuff. Right. Yeah. It's actually not that crazy. The buy my side someone's you know obviously most houses don't cost that much but let's even half it and you go 15 grand you go some of those people it's like you basically say i want to go this place this place this place they go look at them and then what other agent in the so basically the con- the collusion is they agree that they're going to take half and half right? yeah but in what industry would you ever hire someone to get you uh, to buy something for you and if you pay more they get more money yeah, for no, no, for sure. Yeah, the incentives yeah. are insane, and well, you go. So you go. Okay, so twenty five grand. You go. Okay, so you did like a week of work. So what? You make like ten million dollars a year, or uh-huh. whatever. The, what, well, the problem is, is so so few of them actually make any money. Like. And for realtors, because there's so many. Yeah, exactly. Realtors. So then you're becomes, subsidizing the other people. Well, what happens? No, it's not subsidizing. What happens is it becomes like who can find the buyers, and then so like, dude, realtors and shit. Like when you go on Google and you search for like a realtor, like those ads, like that they'll run on Google, like they're paying like fifty dollars a click. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So it ends. It ends up just like everybody starts <laughs> taking a, a slice of this, and uh, so like you know, Google's making tons of money. That must be probably the, the highest. MLS basically, and all these places that yeah. sort of run them. They have monopoly on the listings because mm-hmm. really all they're offering is like a lot of them are like, oh, I have some secret listings, and essentially, if you don't go through these guys, they won't show your property. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, yeah. they have to make a they make like a deal with the other guy that will split the commissions, and then they go, okay, so I'll show I'll show your house, and they have access to the listings, and you can't see a lot of them or whatever mm. right so it's a total scam yeah and it's falling apart because there's a big class action lawsuit and they've convinced all the agents that they've kind of kind of with acting where they were like convinced a lot of like poor actors to be like you should be like um essentially out there uh protesting for tom cruise to make more money yeah, yeah exactly and, and you basically will not get, see any part of that they've convinced the real estate agents, and really what happened is because of this thing it's what you said it there was a a fo- I lo- I've been looking a lot into this. There was a forty percent increase in real estate agents. So all of the real estate agents, on average, made zero dollars more. They all made the same. They just did a few less houses for more money, right? Mm-hmm. So basically, it's a complete scam. Yeah. And no one's winning except for the places that have the listings, right? Yeah. But how it well, should but work? They, but, and they compete for the listings. And- sell sides on commission. Buy side, you pay someone, and you go. Uh, essentially, you could say, "Hey, I want I want you for a week. We're going to be looking at places or whatever." The guy goes, "Oh, I'm two grand or three yeah. grand a week or whatever I make. It's probably pretty good salary." And it's like, and if you don't end up buy the house, you still have to pay it. And it's like, and then if you do buy a house, you don't subsidize the the, uh, the right. window shoppers. I think there was actually some company I remember seeing ads for that essentially that is what they were because there's always been pe- <clears throat> people try and like redo it, but the problem is is that that the listings on MLS are are kind of like protected or whatever. <laughs> In that regard, so well, we are. I guess we, yeah. Yeah. But what's the thing in New York City that what's, what's the thing New York City has that's the biggest scam when you rent places where you have to what's it called where the buyer oh the broker fee. the broker fee that is the biggest that is way bigger scam than anything it's a real fucking where you racket. go hey I'd like to rent this place you go okay well I'm the broker so you have to pay me and the because the broker basically and, gets all these listings, then go, I'm going to rent your place out, and I'm going to fucking top, pop three grand on that. Yeah, but you, you the the renter has to pay a fee, and then all... Because normally, it's just like the person who the landlord is, you go, hey, find me a tenant. Here, I'll pay you. But the reason why I'm even bringing it up is because there's a million scams in the world, right? But the problem is, in today's day and age, it would be... 
it's crazy that it still exists because you go, this should just be a website. But the website- Dude, honestly, people have been saying what you're saying for a long time though, trying to, someone's trying to be like, how do we reinvent how this? How haven't they yet? I I wonder the same Well, thing. I know the reason is because these places are powerful and they have a big lobby yeah, and they're yeah. monopolies. Yeah, they're monopolies. Like, dude, the broker fee thing, right when we moved to New York, they had like some injunction, some court injunction saying like the broker fees were illegal. And then there was like no broker fees for like a very short period of time. And then COVID happened and nobody- was charging broker fees because the market was so soft and then they had it just overturned like the state of New York like Supreme Court just overturned and they go yeah you can do broker fees and now they're just back because they they spent tons of money on them there's like so much money involved in keeping it going you know mm. yeah this is scam central it's very much insane. scam central um so anyways we were right about that yep. right that breakfast wasn't the most important meal of the day nope <laughs> no sir <clears throat> you know what else I was looking up okay so one of the big like mom science things was uh, that breakfast was the most important meal of the day. Not yeah. true. It's funny, by the way, because I saw my mom after that podcast and she listens to the podcast and she had a kind of a bone to pick because <laughs> <laughs> she took that as a personal attack. <laughs> She literally, she's like, she didn't like the mom. You know what I did? She didn't to my like mom? attacking the mom. No, house. I went to my mom's house in, <laughs> and it was in the thunderstorm, and I knocked on her door and I go, "You lied to me. <laughs> you <laughs> just like a dark figure, and then the lightning <laughs> lights you up. You fucking lied to you me. Fucking lied to me. <laughs> Does gum even stay in your system for seven years? What else Does did you lie? Swallowed about? gum stay in your stomach for seven years? <laughs> Uh, look me in the eyes and tell me that I can't swim <laughs> after eating. <laughs> you look me in the fucking eyes and tell me face to face that, that I can't go in that pool right after I ate. I forgot about that one. That was I, I do what remember. Else did you lie? How many people died in World War II, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> How many? <laughs> Is BlackRock buying every house or not, Mom? Yeah, what is what else? I'll tell you what. That's why they want everyone not to be conspiracy theories. It's like, this is where it started. From your mom's lying to you up. Yeah, that is the ultimate conspiracy theory. <laughs> hey, Mom, look in my eyes. They're not <laughs> blind, are they? <laughs> Where's the hair? Where's the hair? <laughs> you promised. You promised that I'd have hair on them. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she did not like it. Yeah, you said that the hair, the palms are gonna be hairy, but you know what they are? S sweaty knees. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, spaghetti, the vomit on it already. Which you used to give me for breakfast, which was not the most important meal of the day. <laughs> It's crazy because they're like most important meal of the day. Who is on Epstein's Island, Mom? <laughs> that's 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 A to B right there. That's where you start. That's where you wind up. <laughs> that's what started. They started it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. The lies. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> I remember actually when I was she a kid. She opens her Christmas present it's empty. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember as a kid taking like a swim because we had a pool and taking a swim after eating and I go... It's a lump of coal. Yeah, it seems fine. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Obviously, when you took the swim, you go, where does the water go? <laughs> what happened? I do a cannonball. I'm just standing at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> Where'd Jimmy totally, go? Totally dry. <laughs> Where'd Jimmy go? He's in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> In all the water. <laughs> just, <laughs> he just started doing like a light trot around the pool surface. <laughs> Some kid like down the street's getting washed away. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers in trouble on the topic of Epstein's Island. Yeah. <laughs> he was accusing Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel Jimmy Kimmel wasn't happy, eh? Jimmy Kimmel did not like the smoke. He definitely did not like I the smoke. I watched the video though. He didn't he just kind of he didn't say Jimmy Kimmel would be on the Epstein list. He kind of just insinuated that Jimmy didn't. It is totally kidding. Yeah, he was, was totally like, just joking. And he didn't say like, oh, did Jimmy Kimmel's going to be on the list and then Jimmy Kimmel's like he said he didn't want the list to be out there yeah. Aaron Rodgers goes eh, a lot of people don't want that list coming out Jimmy Kimmel being one of them but yeah. by the way Danny you said the list is sort of a scam though it's ca I, well it's not so it's uh, everybody keeps saying the Epstein list is coming out but the black book was the main thing originally and then apparently the Bill Clinton Danny Polishuk oh <laughs> now we talk Kimmel <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. It was no. a redacted Polish joke. Yeah, this is just some, it could be anybody, okay, guys? It could be anybody. It's a common name. Um, Slick Danny. No, it was, so the girl, you know the girl who is in the the Prince Andrew photo, the famous Prince Andrew, where Andrew's, Prince Andrew's like, I don't sweat or Not whatever? really. So it's like this blonde girl. Her name's like something, Geoff or something. I don't know her name. She's suing Ghislaine Maxwell. 
Okay. Go over Ghislaine Maxwell's involvement in this whole thing because she's she got I think like fourteen million dollars from Prince Andrew and she's she so there's a lawsuit coming out so people keep saying all these names are coming out but apparently a lot of the names are this isn't Jeffrey Epstein's list they're just people like victims like people who like worked but like uh, were like employees <laughs> of of Jeffrey Epstein but like uh, not related to the stuff there might be some names but it's not like here's 150 here's pedophiles. everyone that bu- <laughs> yeah 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 no, okay. no, no, it's not gonna be that it's gonna be didn't lo- feel like it was gonna go- nah. it felt it felt unlikely that was coming out no 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 that's not what it is at all because <laughs> they're saying they're gonna release it this is today's Wednesday they're gonna be releasing it today but it's uh, from what I understand because I've read a lot of, uh, or I've been trying to get to the bottom of it and apparently it just has to do with this lawsuit and uh, it's just like a lot of them are gonna be actual victims which is why they're not being released kind of fake news a little, a little bit yeah well just it did seem a little unlikely it was like here's 150 uh, famous politicians confirmed pedophile yeah yeah, yeah. you're like i don't <laughs> it just seemed well it seemed like okay well that's not gonna happen right yeah yeah i had a friend of ours actually who messaged me yesterday he goes can you believe this fucking epstein list because someone put out a fake one and it was like drew barrymore's on it and like all these people <laughs> and it's just like a screen scrolling of just names it's funny because if you have like a decent like you can just like post something and then it, here's a list right? but it just randomly goes viral because people just believe it to be true. Well, that's a fl- that's the flight logs people are always saying. That the, uh, well, those flight logs are those flight logs. Yeah, are real. yeah. But but I guess it's the same thing. Like Eric Weinstein was like, yeah. I mean, I got invited there. We like had a meeting. But there's also flight logs. Nothing else yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, nothing else. <laughs> nothing. But uh, and then there's also people who are like, yeah, they used the plane, but they never went to the island. Like they flew in between like you know New York and whatever Atlanta or some shit. The, but they're on the flight logs. We just had a quick layover. It's a quick layover. No pun intended. Nothing happen so anyways we'll see i don't think it's i don't think it's gonna be a they fired claudine gay Gay. no she resigned she resigned she She, she took the hero's route (laughs) yeah i mean she resigned she resigned and then they let her uh stay at her so she has a new position which is her old position on her hands and knees begging (laughs) for dude they're paying her the same amount as the president so she kept her president's salary while basically doing some like so she's doing okay yeah she's doing great other than the humiliation and not being the president of harvard it was funny uh i just want to say though claudine gay now that you are out of a job yeah we want to offer you a position at the boys cast yeah so i know she's big in diversity stuff it's not gonna be that she's huge i know that's her sort of area expertise i want to say she can have an official but uh, this is what i think she should be a great men coordinator so claudia and gay i know if you're interested you come to the boys cast you sort of sit in the corner we give you like a little corner a little yep. corner desk and it sits facing the corner and then every week you just come up with great men great men of all races so you will have to find great white men Ooh, that's gonna be <laughs> which i know she's not gonna like but she's her options are limited right now yeah there's not a lot including white to me her thing with getting fired was just like live by the sword die by the sword yeah, stuff absolutely but i thought the article is really funny alternative press said harvard president resignation highlights new conservative weapon against colleges plagiarism yeah i mean i remember that's the thing like i remember plagiarism being a pretty big deal at school like that was the one thing where you really did not want to get busted plagiarizing stuff in college like that was the thing where like if you do that like twice they'll kick you out i know a girl that her dad uh was like a speech writer and he wrote uh he plagiarized a speech and then got fired in his big public humiliation thing yeah i mean plagiarism in specifically academia tried to slip i have a dream in like yeah like (laughs) like academia specifically because i know melania uh, everybody's like, oh, Melania, she plagiarized her speech or something. You're like, yeah, she doesn't work at a college, though. Like, in colleges specifically, that's their main thing is, is they're like, don't plagiarize shit. Mm. You can't, like, that's one of their main tenants is you don't steal other shit you have to properly cite it and then yeah they when they look through a shit because of a this. higher code sort of like we ro- we roll by yeah for sure and then they just they found a bunch of instances where she obviously plagiarized stuff and then someone's like oh well then we should go look into everybody and you're like okay i saw, oh, no, I saw another Great. one that Why said uh, yeah, yeah i saw another one that said uh the um they said they someone said they took her scalp and then the argu- the thing got mad basically being like uh white you saw that too it was like a oh, white it was like uh white people using the word scalp and got mad at or whatever <laughs> and then it said that like scalping was from colonialists <laughs> it's a, trying to say the white guys i'll tell you what though all this um the israel palestine stuff where like it, it switched because this is really the first time that obviously all these people are getting in trouble for this and that right yeah because they go well the play it wasn't about the plagiarism it's people looking for you go yeah you 
you started that, and then Republicans figured out how to do it now. Yeah, now everyone's game. doing it, right? Yeah, we're all just it almost is. It did feel like a little bit, though, because with all the Jew stuff for the white people, white men have been sort of off the chopping block for a little bit. Mm. And I don't know if I like it. I, I, I honestly feel like sort of like a heel that they're trying to make a baby face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we were sort of. I, you go, guys, I'm right here. I'm the bad guy. Yeah, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Razor Ramon, the, the bad guy. Yeah, it's like that's what I feel like a little bit. You go on stage now, and you're like white men, and they're like, no, 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 it's Jews are bad. Like obviously we don't like these plagiarists. Yeah, we and don't like go, plagiarists. And I'm like, I'm sitting what? there in my cape smoking a cigarette. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I'm a white, white colonizing man. man. And they're yeah, and they're and they're like, uh, you're not as bad to them anymore. Y- yeah, yeah. Well, they're having to kind of take their foot off the gas a little bit. They they're, took their foot off the yeah, gas. They, a little well, bit. I think they're realizing it. That they're like maybe we went a little too far with this. That's what exactly. It, that's what it seems like they go. Oh. But I sort of I was I sort of was comfortable in the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm kind of been in my cage, and then there, I was insti- I'm institutionalized in the darkness <laughs> where people think that white guys are the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm like it's my it's my zone now a little bit, right? Yeah. Especially comedically. And then a lot of times now it's like you're in your fucking you're in your cage, and then they're just like your sentence is over, and you're just like ah, I'm fine. <laughs> 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 then come out and yeah, you're like Brooks or Shawshank. <laughs> you go, I don't want to c- grab the knife. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> they go They make the hierarchy And they're like Well obviously the worst is this And the second worst is this And the third I go Put me on the fucking <laughs> Grab that pen <laughs> I'm on the bottom <laughs> 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 yeah, Don, yeah. You're on a date with a girl I like, what? You can't handle me I'm a white man <laughs> We're trouble. <laughs> no, that's no what it is. I'm George Costanza when yeah, he tries yeah, to say yeah, he's the yeah, bad, yeah, boy. bad boy. Yeah, I'm smoking the cigarette. I got the Letterman jacket on. I'm like, you don't want anything to do with us, white men. We're trouble. And then she goes, No, you guys aren't so bad. I go, We are. <laughs> <laughs> Our ancestors. But my ancestors. ancestors. <laughs> Rotten to the bone. <laughs> My ancestors, they done terrible things. <laughs> Worst. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. We have a new sponsor on the boys cast, and that is Grinds. The reason I, okay, so Grinds, when me and Danny did Tim Pool the yep. first time, the guy, they have a guy that drives right. you, and then he, he had these, and we're like, mm. what the hell is that? And then he was like, so he gave us both of them. Immediately, I went back. And it was, uh, yeah, they're the best. I'm going to a sponsorship guy. We're all going to enjoy yeah, grinds. Let's, let's all have a nice grind. Let's all have a grind. Oh, so, yeah. So I Love it. I basically immediately went back. I was telling everyone about this. I hit our sponsorship guy. I was like, you got to get us on the grinds thing. So this is a pouch. It's caffeine. And coffee. And, they ta- and coffee. And they taste amazing. Ooh. So it's basically, if you're into pouches, which I am, sometimes you're doing too many of the other pouches. So grinds is a better pouch. Yeah. And it's not a full cup of coffee it's like you're having a bit of coffee yeah, just like a little little just a little jolt mm. it's, it's if you're on that grind if you're on the grind grinds is that's how sick grinds was though. i mean the first time i had when i was like this is yeah, up my alley me dude too, me too so basically a lot of times here's a perfect example late at night sometimes i'll be working at like 11 or whatever i'm like i can't have a fucking coffee yeah, you, you know what coffee, i mean no but i can have like i can have a grind uh, i can have a hit of a you know what i mean absolutely okay so grinds small pouches coffee and caffeine if you want to cut down on other stuff you're doing quick hit of energy anytime tastes amazing by the way Mm -hmm. these are it's the shit yeah so i love grinds um that's awesome which flavor is this this is oh yeah we should mention the flavor the flavors. Sick. this is double mocha Ooh, nice uh i had what did i have the salty caramel money Car- that was the other one the I was root trying to beer think of. <laughs> root beer is pretty fun yeah they're all good i'm more of they're the caramel good. and the mocha is the more like the classics probably yeah. so if you go to grinds.com the promo code boys cast there's 25 percent off i'm telling you this is sick and there's no other uh the best there's no like downfall to yeah there's it. no downside to them this is these are you're not addicted it's just a little caffeine jolt and but it's, it's fun like to have on the mouth. plane fun yeah. to do yeah, yeah it's the perfect thing and they taste awesome and i'm sort of i'm sort of a hit at the parties too because i'll bring them out and people go everyone goes what is that and what i'll give them everyone goes are you kidding me where do you get these i go now and then i was trying to solve that problem because i was like i want to do it on the podcast because yep. they're so sick so get grinds.com promo code boys cast 25 percent off you can also get them on uh, other places like amazon or whatever but mm-hmm. you want to do it this way yeah grinds.com 25 percent off promo code boys cast you'll thank me for telling you about them the shit 
And now taking care of your health is not always easy, but it should be simple. And that's why, you know, for the last year, now it's been years, probably three years I've been on AG1. The first thing I do every single morning, I do an AG1. I take a couple other things now, but the first thing I do is AG1, Uh protein shake, and then I do a coffee. Yep. AG1, it tastes great. It's probably the most in my life of things that, uh, he's the first thing in my life where it was like a multivitamin that I actually stayed on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for three years straight now. And that's every serving of AG1 delivers your daily dose of vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, and more. Powerful, healthy habit, and also powerfully simple. You might be wondering, how do you know AG1 is such a quality product? But every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know it's safe. The ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, nutrient density. You've probably heard a lot of top people in the fitness space talking about AG1. It is a known good one. It's the best. You might notice that as you get older, especially, you might need more nutrient support than you used to. I'm like that, especially when I'm traveling. You do a tough workout, have a long day. AG1 covers your bases with high quality ingredients, prebiotics, adaptogens, probiotics, antioxidants, whole food source superfoods. I drink it daily, and that's how you get that extra boost and you can bring it on the road. So if there's one product I recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1, and that's why I've partnered for them for so long, and that's why the Boys Cast has partnered for them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2, and get five free travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash boyscast. That is drinkag1.com slash boyscast to check it out. You know what's uh, so? You know, um, uh, Vivek's pretty like good at being a politician. Sometimes I can't believe he's doing so bad in the polls. I don't buy any of the polls. I guess I don't buy it either. But I saw one recently. Everybody's like, "Oh, Nikki Haley's up forty five points on Vivek." I'm like, impossible. I think he's better at like politics than other people. But I also think he's younger, so he's the only people that maybe talk to people like around our age. Yeah. But I was he kind of did a he did a speech where they go, "Will you condemn white supremacy?" And he was like, "I'm not going to do this bullshit." Yeah. He basically said he was like he kind of did some version of like, and they all they you know everyone was it became a big thing or whatever. But he's basically just like listen I'm not playing these like stupid games like yes I obviously I'm against racism it's like you're trying to find an article it's like and he was kind of right because I was like but he handled it pretty good it was kind of like um he knows what game he's he like, I know what game you're playing. Yeah, but it was good to call it out. It's and not a lot of them do it. No, but not it, as well as him. Yeah, because it was it was sort of like if someone says that to you, it's like a kid thing being like, "Do this, or you're gay," mm-hmm. and then you do that, and they're like, "La, oh, you're gay." Yeah. You know, and that's like what the news sort of does, right? Mm-hmm. Well, imagine you sat down with someone, and you go, "Do you do you condemn cheating on your wife? Do you think cheating's the worst? Any man cheating?" And you go, "What are you doing right now?" Well, the problem what is, is this. What, what the fuck are you up to? Yeah, well, like in the instance that you're talking about with the Vivek thing, is a Washington Post reporter, and she. He's operating from the point of you can't I don't want a Republican to be the president, right? So that's where she started. So we have to do whatever we can possibly to not have a Republican president. So she's like not in acting in good faith. She's she had to, to switch and not play defense. Yeah. yeah, she's like putting, yeah, she's literally like playing offense and putting him on the defensive when you're like, that's not a fair question. And I know it's later in the game where it's like Trump sort of fell for some of those traps a little yeah. bit, but it's later in the game now, you know what I mean? So he knows how to do it. And the Washington Post has been more exposed too. So, you know, it's they've lost a bit of their teeth as well. So. Yeah, so obviously it's, he, he He's doing it at an easier time in the game. Yeah. And I think that everyone sort of figured out that, but it seems like not a lot of them do it that much still. They still sort of defend themselves. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll go. But I was kind of. But, anyways, I'm. The interesting thing to me was because a lot of people that don't like him, they'll be they'll say uh, that he's like a sleazy car salesman. Honestly, I haven't really seen them other than well, Dan Jones. I don't really know that many people who like don't like him. Really, I feel I feel like I've seen that take a hundred times. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess I don't. But know. the thing is, which is. And to be honest, I agree with it. Yeah. He is a sleazy Indian car salesman or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, they are all car salesmen. Yeah, they're fucking politicians. They're legitimately selling you a car, like which is their party. Like, yeah. the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are used cars. Yeah, absolutely. That are being sold to you. So it's like... And he's even, you know, he's doing the method of being like, listen, man, like this dealership, I'm on your side. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah obviously he's doing that with the Republican Party. He is a car salesman. Yeah, but they yeah, all yeah. Are, like, he's like, I'm the inside guy. Yeah, dude, know? Trump's the car salesman that basically said, he's like, but you look so great in that. You're going to get all the ladies. Look at you. <laughs> Trump's, the, Trump's yeah. the car salesman that's like, you, I'll take you to the strip club later. Like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. coke with the guy at the strip club. Obama's the car salesman that like sends your f- family a Christmas card every year to like uh, stay in touch. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? But he's yeah, still yeah. selling you a car. Yeah, for sure. 
Clinton's the car salesman that has you smell his fingers. He's <laughs> <laughs> coming in the back with me. If <laughs> Biden's the car salesman that goes to the wrong lot. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. he, no, this is Biden as a car salesman. He's like, you just hear knocking on the trunk. He goes, I locked myself in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, let me show you this uh, best car on the market. It's a Model T Ford. DeSantis <laughs> is the car salesman that's having like a really big conversation. And then some of the other guys are goofing around in the back and he's really mad at that. You know what I mean? Like DeSantis is the car yeah, salesman. He's professional. He's professional. And a lot of the other uh, car salesmen, they're like, they're like sort of throwing spitballs at someone. And he gives them a look like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, sort of, I take this seriously. Yeah, you're fucking up my business, man. Yeah, yeah. He's very serious about his sale. He's like so fucking close, <laughs> but he's keeping the fake smile on with the guy. Like, but <laughs> yeah. And then he looks back yeah. at the other guys, like, could you, could you do mind? And he goes, I'm sorry about them. So anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. gets back Got into character. New, new hires. But it's just funny being like their car salesman. It's like, who the fuck isn't? Yeah, yeah. Nikki Haley's the car salesman that's trying to sell you some a gun. You know, this one comes with a gun in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Got a fucking AK in the the. <laughs> yeah, this Nikki Haley stuff. I'm not. She, she did you see her thing where the, the slavery thing? With her big gotcha. I actually didn't watch it because the stuff with her doesn't. Because I feel like I don't even care to like chat about that's it. That's what much. the crazy even, thing is. Every time I see a Nikki Haley thing, I just kind of creep on Nobody is excited about her, but then the polls come out. I'm not even excited to make fun of her, really. Yeah, but like the polls come out and they're like she's like three points behind trump and you're just like no fucking way yeah probably not i'm not really that tapped into but, old but then you're like you're saying so though, who's like so many old people but then you're like so who's making these polls and i guess like they just want nikki it's one of those things where it's like the deep state wants nikki haley to be the presidential candidate and they're just like kind of making it happen they're just doing it well that's the head office at the <laughs> yeah the head, head office, o- they head go, office they in go, the car they go, lot. yeah there's the guy who's actually the top salesman they go you know but no nikki's actually it won't look <laughs> exactly. good if we if our top salesman another white guy this year yeah like we can't just have a top salesman because like it kind of makes it into like the ford like annual letter doesn't look great head office no she's really good at sucking up to the to the the guy at the vice president at head office yeah and so you're kind of like why why do they love her so much and then you you're like oh they go to dinners and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah yeah she's she's tapped in she's really tapped in even though she kind of sucks at her job yeah yeah but she's the one but anyway she said there was someone just asked her in the audience like every time was- every time the that guy comes from head office she's the first guy to give him the biggest hug yeah of course, of course. <laughs> that's her and they were like what's the cause of of the civil war and she just like didn't say slavery like and they kept asking her and she just like said i don't know what she said but it wasn't slavery and then everybody's like ah she said it wasn't slavery that's what i kind of thought it was, it was something like that yeah basically she was saying the civil war was uh, over i mean i guess Economics people do make that there. argument yeah i guess but again you're a politician like even if you think that you know what the right answer is for being a politician. <laughs> yeah. Right? You go slavery. And then you go. And then you could be also. Yeah, and there were some other factors. You probably want to put them in that order. But like to be like academic about it. Again, oh, well, technically, there's like actually more <laughs> things have come out in the few like, recently where it actually seems like it was less likely. You could, slavery. <laughs> it's a slavery. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> You're running for president. You told me that you were uh, here last night and you go, well, it was 1201. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that yeah, was yeah, today. Yeah, and yeah. you asked me where I was last night, where te- where I was there at 1230. So that was today. If you had asked me what this I did morning. today, if you asked me what I did this morning I I would say I was banging a hooker and doing coke (laughs) but that wasn't last night that was this morning so did I lie (laughs) or are you bad at questions (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) the Rob Ford thing When he goes, uh, they goes. Do you smoke crack? And he goes, ask me the question again. And he goes, uh, have you ever smoked crack? And he goes, one time. You asked me, do I smoke crack? No, I don't smoke crack. I've smoked crack. Yeah, exactly. That was not the question you asked. Getting super technical is not yeah. even for politics, nah. probably. Eh? Nah. <laughs> um. The boys do stay winning this time. Yeah. So Danny posted one where he was saying he was at a bathroom. Dude, I was out of this rest yeah. stop, man. On the New boys Year's. are winning in 2024. Woo, baby. That, that line was huge. So big, huge, honking girl line. At the big, rest stop? Yeah. Small, gu- small guy York. line, right? No line. No line. I, it wasn't super clear, but there was zero line for the boys. He didn't mention that before that happened, you fucking laid one down. <laughs> you laid the smack down in the toilet, so no yeah, one wanted to go the near The sirens it. were going off, so <laughs> technically I did I set off the doomsday alarm. <laughs> Had a big dinner on New Big Dinner on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so that that was a part of it. Part of <laughs> no one was in a hundred meters of the thing. No, that women's line though. Oh, 
uh, invigorated. Here's me. another. But there's a win for the boy. It's basically the South Park thing. But men stunned as the size of average penis is revealed, and it's smaller than you think. Yes, it is. <laughs> so basically, it said the average size of a erect penis in America is 5.17 inches. Ooh, that's a fucking horn. That's a <laughs> that is a big horn. You know what it was kind of I was thinking about a lot is you know. Um, because I talk about it on stage too about like how the girls will be like every girl's beautiful and just be like a girl under a bridge like even me and we yeah, be yeah. like especially you you know what I mean but the uh, whenever they do that it's funny it's good calling girls out on this because girls will be like that girl is beautiful and it'll be like a girl that's not particularly attractive and she'll be like he, she's at least an eight and it's like okay but you know you're hotter than her so yeah. you're just bragging yeah of course right yeah, yeah, yeah. but basically you go well that girl's an eight and you go you're hotter than you go am I it'd be like if, if a bunch of guys if you were like with a chick and you're watching a movie Movie and a guy comes out with a really small dick and you're like what a piece what like, a that piece. is magnificent <laughs> and she's like yours is bigger and you go i mean is it well that one's a piece yeah that's a great one that's a good horn that's, uh, that's a, that right there is a nice a, dependable a, <laughs> there is absolutely nothing wrong with that piece right there nope. that is a nice piece of machinery absolutely and then the girls are like well you're yeah you're bigger than that and you go <laughs> oh, i guess <laughs> thank, oh, you. Oh, thank you yeah. thank you thank <laughs> you that one's amazing <laughs> yeah thank you yeah, thanks <laughs> I guess, I guess I guess when you put it that way it is thanks a lot I appreciate uh, that yeah. more than that <laughs> yeah exactly right so that's kind of what that is but I don't know I think this study was by a girl too because I saw her do an interview about it too and they did a whole big study <laughs> It'd be pretty funny if guys like uh, c c colluded to send in really small D guys. So they, do them. <laughs> they found like a 10,000 small D. Yeah, yeah, they go, yeah. study of 10,000 men. like a 4chan prank. <laughs> All right, boys. Time to be honest. We need to rig the system here. Yeah, they rig the system. <laughs> they send in all the small horn guys. <laughs> the average side flaccid is 3.6, uh, rect 5.17. Um, and it's shorter than a lot of people imagine. And a lot of girls, when they were asked, think that it's way bigger than that, right? Yeah. Which, uh, that does make sense. That I think girls, that does probably true that girls have a little bit of an inaccurate picture. Sure. Because they always say mine's only like uh, f three inches above average. <laughs> That's why I can spit it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I read a thing that says Cam Canada has uh, bigger hogs than other places. Really? A lot of it's just racial demographics, though. Yeah, I was going to say, that seems... Usually uh, a lot, Usually, it's just racial demographics when they say like certain, certain countries have different things. A lot of times, it's just the people are bigger, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see. Yeah, Canada's... But there is boys. certain things, like certain you know types of white have different ra yeah. different sizes. G generally, I always wonder about food, It's babe. generally not that crazy to say that like this, it's like you can just take the size of the people. Yeah, it's generally you go you go this one I, like when you yeah, look at yeah, the yeah. things they go this one is the bigger hogs it's like also the tallest guy. I always wonder if it could be related to dietary as well because I guess size and diet is, is related as well. I wonder that's well. I mean, I probably malnutrition over like yeah, a exactly. long period of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah, but it, I mean, I think it's all kind of related, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Obviously, there's tiny guys with massive horns, but just on average. Yeah, like I wonder, like is he? Or is like are they packing it in like Ethiopia and stuff? Yes. <laughs> what kind well, of question but, is that? Well, that's what I'm saying. But then they have, but they have, they're all like malnourished and shit. I think they. That's brought, what I'm wondering. You know, so that's a good question. Yeah, I don't. Know. I'm not gonna type in <laughs> Ethiopian penis. <laughs> <laughs> Ethiopian penis. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not fucking putting this in the search. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to get the Jason Whitlock thing where you're going to be getting the fucking, did you see that? Oh, Jason happened, yeah. Whitlock, the conservative, he has a show on The Blaze. And so he was on like the ESPN website. And so there's like a little <laughs> oh, ad yeah, banner thing okay. where it's just like, it's ta you know, you just get tailored to your, so it's constantly changing. Like, it's not like Ford. <laughs> it's just like some, and he goes, what is this smut? And you're like, that's like a cookie related to a previous. <laughs> Search what did it say? It was something about like some, I don't know, some sexual thing related to something like his wife or something. I don't know. It wasn't <laughs> that bad. But it was, but you, he don't, just you don't get that. It. You don't get that search in ESPN. No, you don't get that search on ESPN unless sports like, sports scores uh, don't bring you that one. No, unless you were looking for something similar to that, and everybody was just like dunking on. I them. always get banners for penis reductions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the average. You what? Johnny, Johnny, took over, Johnny took over the team, <laughs> and we salute you, Johnny Glover, for mucking up your algorithm. But it's funny saying history. it like that. He goes, "I have the average," and <laughs> it just sounded like he was saying the, like his own. Oh. <laughs> okay, you're you're saying the average for what? For Ethiopia. Okay, what is it? Five point three. Okay, and so and this one maybe they're not point? packing as much as you might think. Pa well, but if you factor in malnutrition, and I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm a little above I'm, average. I'm, yeah, a little above average. But then, 
What's that? Above the U.S. Above the U.S., but then if you factor in, like, imagine they were on a U.S. diet. Yeah. They'd probably be, like, just destroying chicks left and right. Okay, so here's another win for the boys. So you've probably heard over time where girls will always say that uh, men are more of babies when they're sick. Yeah. Right? You've heard that a lot. Yeah, and man I get, flu, which is female propaganda. That's nonsense. So you don't think that's true? No. Because I've... Well, maybe I'm a baby. <laughs> but I've sort of... Maybe not because so here's I, the I always just go to work. I never even stop working. That's what I'm saying. So but women true, but. like to try. You go. I don't feel well, and they're like, "Oh, does the baby need like?" They'll they'll try and be like, "Oh, can I get you?" You know what I mean? They fucking what's that girl? They the, like, the mother. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the Munchausen. The fucking yeah, women. dude. They, dude it's the yes, Munchausen sir. by proxy shit. I'm telling you, they're. When I fuck that pussy, I pussy a turn red. A gymnastics, now the pussy dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I think chicks will be like, they try and baby you. Preach, you. I like this theory. Yeah, and then they go, oh, you have man flu? And you're like, leave Maybe me the I fuck do, alone. Yeah. You're like, I live in New York City. I'll Uber Eats whatever I need. Leave me alone if you're going to like fucking hold this over me. <laughs> That's what you say when she asks if you need anything. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah. She goes, she goes, you want me to make you soup, Danny? You go, I have Uber Eats. I literally grab a lamp and I chuck it at the fucking door. <laughs> Get out. Maybe this is what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have something called Uber Eats. I mean, when I'm sick, I just uh, I want to just be left alone, basically. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a soup. I'll take a tea, I guess. Okay, so I, I've I'm actually... I'm not like... <laughs> Please help me. This is the sickest I've ever been. <laughs> like, I can't speak for every guy, but this is, that's my theory. But I've sort of agreed with them a tiny little bit where I think that sometimes... And I've heard girls say that. I, I don't think it's the craziest theory to say that guys are a little more uh, 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 babies about being sick. I don't think I just don't think it's then girls. I don't know. I don't know. My girl's been sick recently. Out of all the things we could trash girls for, I don't think they're that crazy. But there's obviously some. I'm saying on average. I I just. I'm sure it it exists. I'm not trying to cock out here or nothing. No, I'm sure it exists. But I like your theory that it's because of Mount Munchausen. Yeah, it's more just like the women. (laughs) Women are more like kind of because that's how they get you. They caretakers and stuff. They let me take care of you. Yeah, they they tuck you into bed. Yeah, they go. Yeah, I guess I am staying. And then they're like, "Oh, does the baby need to be tucked into bed?" You're like, "I don't even like being tucked in." That's what she does, do you? No, 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 I hate tucked. I'm a little bit of a sniffle. <laughs> Do you see baby Danny? Need some food? You go, <laughs> no, I don't want to soup. No, I'll take a full ham though. <laughs> feed a fever, feed a cold. <laughs> That's Danny's fucking That's theory. my motto. That's why I'm never not sick. <laughs> feed a fever, feed a cold, feed a sniffle. Feed a, <laughs> feed a knee injury. <laughs> Feet a haircut. <laughs> feet a nick from shaving. Just anything, you know. <laughs> feet a, feet a, ro- feet a feet rolled me. ankle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. feet a I'm, but I don't buy it. I think just women are more motherly, so then they kind of... Okay, I like that they, theory. They put that on But you. their other theory is that allegedly they did a big study, and they go, is this proof that the man flu is real and men are the weaker sex? And it said that one of the reasons is because apparently... Uh, Estrogen boosts your immune system. Wait, a little is this bit. an article questioning whether men are the weaker sex? No, it's just saying that. Uh, I, I this is sort of, in my opinion, sort of like uh, a win. Yeah. And the reason I'm maybe we're oh. interpreting it differently because the reason I'm interpreting it is it said that men's flus act. If you and your chick are both sick, yeah. you actually are oh, more you're sick. sicker. Oh, okay. that's kind of what it's saying. And one of the reasons for that is because estrogen, and this is a based on evolution, mm. estrogen uh, essentially fights off colds and Better, sickness more. Right, right, because when you're like a and mother, testosterone is worse. Yeah, and it said one of the reasons is men are so much less likely to die back in the day from uh, you know colds and flus. They're more likely to die in accidents and this right, and that. Right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, war and sort of stuff like that. So. It it basically was saying estrogen, one of the things it does is uh, raises your immune system. Kind of like, obviously, if you're uh, super tired or, or uh, cold or like all that sort of shit, you yeah, get it's, sick a, it's an evolutionary mechanism. And it's saying testosterone actually like lowers your immune system a little bit. So when you and a girl are sick and she's like, you're being a baby, you're like, I'm more sick. I'm more sick. Statistically. Yeah. That's true. And that's kind of what their pitch is. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I could see that. Uh, yeah. So you're, but you're still saying you're not a baby, even though you are more sick. Is kind of which yeah, is maybe yeah. true. Uh, yeah, it's all that testosterone. Uh, yeah, but you're coursing through my veins. You're so you know, fucking teed up, high T Danny. I'm fine. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> I mean, it is a fact. Men do 
live shorter lives because they're less likely to go to the hospital when they're really ill. That's true. Like they're like there is, and that probably you'd think. I don't know if that's testosterone related or just general toxic masculinity. I like your theory though. When a girl's like, "Oh, you're being a baby," it's like, "Or you're being Munchausen." Yeah, by proxy. It's Munchausen by proxy. You're trying to make me sicker. You keep giving yeah. me. You're, you're poisoning me. <laughs> yeah. Why are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You go. Can I have some uh, cough syrup and whatever? And she just like fucking replaces it with some like non-cough syrup. They, yeah, you go to sleep and they cut your hair all weird to make you look more sick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, they're shaving off weird patches of your beard. <laughs> Yo, I think my hair's falling out. Oh, is the baby's hair falling out? That's well, weird for just a cold. Never happened before. <clears throat> well, anyways, I thought that was a bit of a win. All right, yeah, yeah. I'll, the, 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 that explanation, I'll, I'll, I'll concede that. Yeah. Kevin Hart is winning because that girl. We talked about this last week before this came out, and Kevin Hart essentially the girl was doing a press tour talking about how he cheated and stuff, and we were saying why would you have a girl assistant? She did have an NDA. He's suing her, yeah, and he's gonna win and bankrupt her. Okay, and they straight up tried to extort him before she yeah. went on the podcast. They posted a big thing being like the interview Kevin Hart wouldn't want to see. Told Kevin Hart's people they wanted two hundred and fifty. Uh, and yep. this interview wouldn't come out. Str- I don't know how they thought but they'd again, get away with this. Kevin Hart doesn't seem like a guy to mess with like that. No, it seems crazy. And so <laughs> I guess we'll have to follow up on this because I guess this is going to decide how Rock Solid, these NDAs are. Tiger's NDA held up pretty good, though. Well, her, how would this NDA not hold up? I don't know. But then is she just so stupid? Like, is she just. No, an I idiot? think she thought this was going to work. She thought she was going to uh, extort him. But if, but that's what I'm saying. But if she knows that she signed an NDA, and then he's like, "Well," I think or, or she figured he goes, "Okay, well, yes, I'm going to break the NDA. I'm going to. This is straight up extortion. Like, yes, you'll sue me in oblivion, but this information will get out. So choose your choose." That's and I think if you're broke, you don't give a shit. That's fucked Someone up. goes, "I'm going to sue you for ten million dollars." You go, "I owe fifty thousand dollars." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My well, current I'm, net worth. I'm currently in the red. So. Yeah, I'm worth negative fifty thousand dollars. I'll go bankrupt. Please do me that favor. Sue me for ten million so I can go bankrupt. Please, I'm begging you. Some real girl boss shit right there. I think that's what happened. <laughs> she goes, I have but he's suing memory. her yeah so i guess she's gonna get her wish we'll see we're gonna be following that story so guess, closely yeah, so i guess she'll just get fucked over i'll the- tell you what he should have done and the reason i'm connecting this is because someone sent me this one and it's amazing it's from the witches versus the patriarchy forum uh-huh. um does anyone know a cease and desist ritual <laughs> so this is his mistake that kevin hart didn't do he didn't do the cease and desist ritual <laughs> Does anyone know of a ritual that serves the same purpose as a cease and desist letter? I have a neighbor that won't leave us alone. Uh, and pretty stereotypical bad neighbor. And I don't want to hurt him or anything, but uh, and, and people were commenting being like, if they, some of the potions and spells that they have that'll cease and desist. <laughs> so Kevin should have went that. Like came and, you know, putting paprika all over the girl's <laughs> house and stuff like that. So just done a ritual. He's too busy, man. He's too much of a hustler. Should have solved the problem. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Speaking of comedians, just do a quick thing because Chappelle's special came out. I didn't watch it. I haven't seen it. Um, I haven't but, seen that or Ricky Gervais. But obviously, uh, we talked about <laughs> obviously trans stuff. The transgenders. Obviously, trans stuff came up, and it said. But I just thought Daily Beast. I just want to read this one article because I thought it was so funny. They go, Daily Beast goes. Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special proved he's learned nothing, and it was like, well, Daily Beast, maybe you might want to look in the mirror and see that you complaining about Dave's special made him more famous. So maybe it's yeah. you that didn't learn nothing. Isn't that crazy for them to be like, every time he does a special, you all complain, he gets more rich, gets more famous, and then he keeps talking about it. Yeah, he just cranks these out, specials out. One of- you're, you're literally writing his next joke right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's yeah. learned nothing. It's like, okay. Funny because he did promise two specials ago to be done with it. and then it That's just, true. He straight up like made a whole point of being like, this is the last time. I've heard a few people, kind of the same thing I said about the Gervais one. But it won't Chappelle go, but, thing but it won't go away culturally, so then I guess he's just like, Fuck. No, I think a lot of people, and one thing that I think that we maybe don't bring it up enough is that Pe- when people are just in their 50s it's like they are gonna be three or four years ahead in the- like those guys aren't fucking chronically online the way we are true I mean I'll tell you this about myself right and I'm not like trying to say that we're like at the the most forefront in the world or anything like that but mm. uh, oftentimes I make a video and it does okay and then I repost it a year later and it does way better yeah yeah, yeah. like uh, I that happens to me 
a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll post a video on Instagram, and it was kind of like, I guess I was, like, too early on saying it. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? yeah, dude, I have a lot of that with my stand-up where, like, certain jokes where people are, like, some of the gender jokes that I used, used to do, and then people at the time, people were like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Yes. And then and then I post the, like, we'll repost them now, and people are like, you hack? And I'm like, this is, like, eight years old. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't come up with this fucking a week ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I, yeah, and I sometimes don't post stuff like that because yeah, I'm like, it feels, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. but sometimes you, sometimes it'll be more like, you know, it, it was before it felt like too early and now it's like at the sweet spot or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 for sure. But so I think that a lot of times with people that are in their 50s, the sweet spot's going to be a little fucking later because their audience is older. Yeah, their audience is older. I don't know if Chappelle's audience is that much older, though. I, I guess he probably doesn't have like a lot of, well, I wonder both. if, yeah, he must have, like Ricky Gervais definitely, I can't imagine. Ton, well don't forget like fans, especially but. like a lot of uh like cool black guys yeah were kind of like ignoring this stuff because it was like pro it was like it was it was a presenting itself like we're here to help you yeah yeah so you weren't like and then afterwards basically once it turned like black people versus trans they were out but that only happened like a year and a half ago right right so it was i think a lot of like hip-hop stuff maybe i don't know whatever right mm -hmm. But it kind of reminded I was just thinking about it Like in terms of The old stuff Like even You probably saw Like it was Elon Musk and Green Day And Green Day basically Changed their thing to uh, Yeah yeah The MAGA Don't want to be part of The MAGA agenda <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really have a ring to it <laughs> Yeah yeah <laughs> Danny's favorite song always every time I go to Danny's house he's listening to one twenty one guns <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think first CD I ever had was, Duke, always was Dookie I always like saying people's jam was twenty one guns <laughs> twenty one guns one twenty one guns <laughs> <laughs> crappy song to like yeah. <laughs> but obviously but it kind of felt like it was kind of like uh, and then all a lot of people were like oh Green Day thinks they're cool uh, being against uh, uh, it's obviously not cool but it's like yeah but it's all you're right it was sort of like both sides aren't cool you know what i yeah. mean being like green days uh also wasn't the song originally about it, it was just an old bush? debate it was like it just felt like a six-year-old debate yeah but wasn't you know, that, you're the right song originally was against bush so you're kind of just like this yeah, is like okay. a reprise green day's corny yes yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. green day's corny you know what i mean no no questions about that yeah, yeah. i guess what people are like how dare you do this on our on our no, but, uh, vaunted new york new year's eve but this is where i'm sort of pointing out the six years ago conversation a little bit where it's like Green Day's not cool anymore. No. And it was kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's a good point six years ago. Yeah, you I know. think they did the halftime show of the Grey Cup this year, so that's no, kind they didn't. I'm pretty sure they did. Green Day Packers? <laughs> so that's all you need to know uh, about how, where they're at, is they did play the halftime show of the 2023 Grey Cup. I remember when I was in... Here's a CBC article. Green Day doesn't disappoint during Grey Cup halftime show in Hamilton. Do you think they said, do you want to be part of the poly agenda? <laughs> poly ever agenda. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's all you need to know. Do you think he did that? That's all you need to know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not, I'm no, not, not part of the Stephen Harper agenda. <laughs> not, do, 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 do. No, 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 not in fucking Hamilton, Ontario. I'll tell you that much. Hell <laughs> That's no. true. Fucking Tiger Cats. <laughs> no, sir. <Get> booed. <laughs> you got the wrong guy. Yeah, they probably like showed someone right before they go, what do you think about this line? And someone's like, yeah, you want to fucking leave here in a stretcher, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking DeFasco town. If you want to fucking leave here all bruised up. <laughs> you're gonna be really local references right now but oh, you're not gonna talk about the polio agenda you're gonna be talking about the 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 free health care agenda because you're gonna need it pal uh. <laughs> this is steel this is steel town pal steel town pal they're not into that queer shit <laughs> I'm, when i was in grade six we, we did uh the uh, I, I, sixth grade for the americans <laughs> Year six, <laughs> sixth grade. I was in sixth grade. They had uh, my band played the like school, um, I, I, not a talent show, like uh, some type of performance where my band we were the headliners. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and we did Green Day Brains Stew. We did Rage Against the Machine uh, in Green Day Brains Stew, and That's I think cool. we did a Beastie Boys song. But we did uh, Green Day Brain Stew and we started with that. And I just remember, like, we always bring this up how funny it was because we came out and it was like, we were kind of, we were kind of like, what's going on? Like, how are we doing? Lincoln Alexander Public School. Right? You know, and then I just remember we go, one, two, one, two, three, four. Doon it. <laughs> 
The guy who's crappy at bass. <laughs> Just the biggest build up in history. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the allure of Green Day, though, when you were like, if you're a child, like young and a musician, is you could just play all of their songs and like not be good. It wasn't hard. They're yeah. all like power chords out across the board. It wasn't a hard band to cover, yeah. No. <laughs> the drummer's pretty cool, Trey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what he's saying online. Maybe it's crappy. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Let me just check this. Cool, right you're now. cool drummer. What's his name? Trey Cool. Trey, Trey Cool. cool. Uh, he goes, oh, just got my fifth booster. <laughs> Trey changed his name to Trey it, Boosted. It, it is Trey Bracket Pfizer Bracket Cool on Twitter. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Even the parts where you rock out is not really that much rocking out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit anticlimactic. Yeah. The one thing I will say, because I got a bunch of emails, because I mentioned that one of the things in 2024, I want to like add some people and stuff like that. But I also want to combine that with the thing I said before, where it's like, uh, uh, just like send something. I think that, because really... Uh, Every job is going to be like in media right now. It's like you kind of need to edit no matter what you're doing. But yep. it's like, dude, go to the boys cast, make a couple clips. If they're good, we'll just make a bunch more. Yeah. And then, you know, like. Yeah, all the stuff's available. Basically, any, it's like always that. It's like if, if you can do that and when anyone's doing good at like making clips and stuff like that, then it's like, okay, well, let's try something else and like yeah. try this. But like, that's always a good place. To, like, and it's start. available just go make to some you clips. specifically. Yeah, you just go do it. I've, like you just go rip the f- But I've given file. that advice for like other things too. It's like everyone I've hired, they just start doing stuff. It's like, and, any, and so many jobs I've got, I've like. Uh, uh, been like yo I think I can do this and I just do it and send yeah. it to them and be like most people are like oh that's pretty good do it again but it's like what do you you know what? If, there doesn't need to be that extra step just be no. like hey I made this and be like that's pretty sick dude a- a- Dave a- who does art for us yeah. uh, literally was like he just started like making stuff yeah, he, just making he stuff. made some funny shit and then like literally messaged him out and being like hey can you make um yeah, Dave from Ken. I'm sure some people have seen his things, but it's like, then I was just like, hey, want to make this? Can you make this? Hey, mm-hmm. I'm doing this video. Can you make this? And now he just makes all the graphics for everything now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's like, yeah, people, so it's, I don't know. I feel like any job in media, it's just like, you just send the thing to someone. You go, hey, I think I can do this. And you go, okay, that was pretty good. I'll post it. Oh, that did pretty good. Let's do another one. Yeah, let's especially do- when it does well. And you go, yeah, they're good. Yeah, you make a couple. You go, that was really good. Let's do go do five more. And if mm-hmm. they don't do good, then it's like, okay, then you then you work on getting better at yeah, the thing, yeah, you know? Exactly. And you will get better just by making the things. Yeah. Like to be like, oh, I want to make clips. Yeah, and some people like, just don't and you're like, do you make clips? And you're like, no. But it is but a weird thing where to. everyone's like, I want to be like a writer. And it was just like, obviously that's a job that everyone wants, but it's like, really, it's like, if you want to be a writer, it's like, figure it out. Figure out how to edit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, that used to be so different. Like, I remember like wanting to be do, do that when I like started comedy, like you know, for a TV show or something. And then it, that that whole system is so different than well, especially for you, for especially for me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tart, close the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan at RyanLongOnline.com <laughs> <laughs> One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list And if that's you, make 2024 the year you finally check it off the list with Babbel That is the sound Be better you in 2024 with Babbel This science-backed language learning app that actually works Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors Waste hours on apps that don't really work And help you speak the language Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons Are designed by over 150 language learning experts To help you start speaking a new language In as little as three weeks Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations The tips and tools are approachable, accessible Rooted in real-life situations So you can actually use this Maybe you're going on a trip Maybe you just want to talk to that special someone. Mm-hmm. And this is delivered with conversation-based teaching, so you're ready to practice what you've learned in the real world. Yeah, you know, I use Babbel. I've said it here before, and I'll say it again. I used it to learn a little bit of Russian so that I could talk to my 99-year-old grandmother. Nice. And, yeah, and I mean, it's great. It's just you have these little... Um, like mini courses, games and stuff. You can choose how long you want to use it a day. You can say, I want to do it five minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, an hour, whatever you want. And then it just kind of notifies you. You do your little things and it just, it works. Like it really does work. And you get the sound. And you get the sound. 
That's what you're doing it for. They've done over 10 million subscriptions. It's Babbel's 14 language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee as well. So here's a special limited-time deal for the Boys Cast listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash boyscast. 55% off at babbel.com slash boyscast, and that is spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash boyscast. Rules and restrictions may apply. Uh, okay, we. This is the, the craziest thing ever. I'm gonna play this video, and this is a big thing that the boys cast is funding. Danny Polish. I, I, I actually kind of wanted to go to. The other you one. are gonna go, guest of honor, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to Fatcon in Seattle, Washington, January 5th. Fatcon, and I want to see you there. Fatcon is a three-day fat liberation celebration, y'all. We will be celebrating fat liberation. I actually, I actually would like to see you get liberated, though. You know what I mean. <laughs> Imagine you come back Liberated from the tyranny of skinniness Yeah, imagine you go to Fatcon And you come back You just have like a mesh tank top on you <laughs> <laughs> You're just like so way too liberated Yeah, it's a little too liberated You're just eating a Big Mac on the thing You're like, <laughs> let's start There you go, I'm sorry Yeah, instead of water, I'm just drinking gravy <sighs> Dan, no, you come back and I'm like, oh, I'm making a joke. I was like, oh, yeah, Danny put on a couple. You go, we're not going to take it. <laughs> it's more than a couple, couple stone. <laughs> I said, no. Curious what the turn Me and my fat con brothers. Well, I don't know what the capacity is on this place, but. <laughs> like the weight? Honestly, watch, reading, watching this and reading through it, it was almost like, oh, I was going to make fun of that. I don't know. It just felt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> felt a just little, like, yeah, yeah, a little Did soft. you see that when you were watching it? You were like, oh, when you went through the thing, I was just like, this is a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have all these. There's one guy. There's one fat influencer guy. I don't know if you look, because it's mostly a chick thing, but then there is one dude, this uh, big black dude who's like, I think a. He had a funny name. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. It was like, oh, I can't remember. I was looking at his Instagram literally, like, before. And their, their whole thing is, like, being fat? His whole thing is he's, like, a fat model. Uh, so they basically have a uh, conference that they put on and grow, uh, you go to be liberated. Like, yeah, you go to, it's just like for fat stuff. They How go, many people are going to go to FatCon, you think? I, I don't know. Dude, tickets, your, to, well, I looked, would you get she, your girl tickets to FatCon? <laughs> like, I wonder, I honestly was like, okay, if I went there, would they be like... She goes, She goes. you think I'm not beautiful? You go, uh, if you look, I've signed you up to go to the Fat and Beautiful <laughs> seminar. <laughs> But like I wonder if like I would go there and be like they would think something they go yeah this is you, like you, for really fat you think people. you're not fat enough I feel like do you think they're like fat I mean all these like chicks that? are every chick I've seen is has a hundred pounds on me <laughs> and they're chicks so I'm like and like the dude is probably like four bills obviously yeah you're right you're I mean you're not fat you're just you're yeah, yeah but, but but like compared to them like I got a few to lose but uh, let me see if I can find this guy because um. I did look him uh, No he's not Like you're saying You're just not in the market So I'll finish the video yeah, here. I can't find it With over 60 hours Of programming Spanning from Policy Legislation Healthcare Community And visual arts Plus a ton more This is sure to be Something you don't want to miss The vibes are going to be Immaculate With a fat brunch A fat fashion show And a fat vendor marketplace There is so much to do Oh this guy Big Burr <laughs> I, I don't even know Whether to laugh or not <laughs> This is him this is him. That's why it sounded like Bill Burr. Yeah, Big Burr. He's a musician. Shout out Big Burr. Uh, Big Burr. Big Burr. Uh, and he's uh, he says, I'm rapper, singer, songwriter, plus size model. Do you think he comes out and he goes, <laughs> this is Fat Burr. He comes out. He goes, welcome everyone. He goes, oh, seeing some skinny people? <laughs> fucking brutal. You <laughs> 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 ah, fucking skinny folk. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff he's getting up to with the modeling. Oh my god, it's him laying on a... It's him totally naked beach. laying in, a, in like the little bit of like water. <laughs> These people! I, I go to McDonald's! <laughs> they, I went to the buffet! They cut me off! <laughs> Fucking brutal! <laughs> Fucking brutal! Do you think Fat Bird does it? <laughs> Act like tickets that? are expensive. Well, actually, how much your fat con? Tickets? I thought tickets were expensive. Actually, because uh, the the cheapest tickets are two hundred fifty dollars, which I thought was kind of high. But then they're doing a brunch on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety percent, probably a loss leader. To be honest, at that point, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're probably like oh, that brunch could go either way. To be honest, that, that brunch is gonna make or break our P and L. Does the brunch have troughs? <laughs> I don't know, dude. They, they do. <laughs> they had a lot. A lot of it was brunches and food. Like a lot of the events I was looking at were brunches and food. But it's it's got like a, a PC overtone too, right? Because oh, everything they were like, here's the seminars, and they all have. Um, 
Uh, so it's 30 hours. They all have trigger warnings on them. Um, a lot of vendors all geared towards fat joy, fat experience, 30 plus hours of programming, fashion show, uh, then more vendors at the fashion show, fat joy, fat experience. Yo, what, do you th- what do you think about this? Uh, you, you go, I'd like to buy a, a vendor booth or whatever. And then you're just uh, an Ozempic rep. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I'm here from Novo Nordisk. <laughs> we sell Ozempic. <laughs> Did you see the news? Ozempic? <laughs> so there's this other one. It's a revolutionary vibrating weight loss pill that could reduce your food intake by 40%. Yeah. <laughs> and essentially, you put a vibrator in your body. <laughs> <laughs> then it, and it rattles around in your body. And then it makes it sound like uh, it makes your body think that you're full. Full, because you're just really rattling around. Do you think How do you not pass it, though? Do you think anyone's slipping that in uh, the drinks? <laughs> But wouldn't you shit it out? I guess they have to like go implant it into you. No, no, no. You keep taking them daily, and there's all you take what? a vibrator oh. every day, and then I think you have to <laughs> give to you know you have to dig it out of your shit. And <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a design flaw where you go yeah so they're kind of expensive so you do have to fish them out of your own shit vibrating pill that tickles the stomach from within provoking specialized stretch sensors in the stomach while telling the brain there's no more room it's pretty crazy they're really solving this problem but the one thing I was trying to look up here on the fat con yeah, I'm looking at so this is what you get the tears was so interesting the tears, so the, the, most the, of the tears they just had more food so you just get full event pass brunch That's, on Sunday access to our vendor hall 30 plus workshop so that's the minimum that you get plump patron fat friend fat bay and then fat royalty so fat royalty they're really so plump patron actually this is probably what i'm thinking is a vip goodie bag Ooh, so the plump patron is you're just buying comes. a badge for uh, uh someone else i think it says your purchase of this badge for a plump stranger fat hospitality friend. suite access is the extra thing that you get with the that's when you're the royalty fat royalty do you think the fat royalty people get like a they're walking around with the chip on their shoulder <laughs> they probably have like an actual king and they're <laughs> eating a giant turkey leg the whole time <laughs> like, yeah. fat royalty you know what was crazy though? Be so not fun. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing that they're doing really interesting. Yeah, is they solved some of the problems because it's all fat people there. They basically said they did their tears for uh, the seating, and they go, "We don't want to have lines because the people at FatCon don't want to wait in lines." Yeah. So they go, "If you're this badge, you go through this time to get your seats, and if you're this badge, you can't wait in line till this time." And they basically eliminated lines, like because they didn't want to have to people have people standing. They sort of solved the line situation. Well, yeah, I think all those rascal scooters sitting in gridlock will be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> It says you can't buy tickets anymore. I don't they know. They have a line doing. free policy, so you don't have to wait in line ever. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I think what happens is, yeah, they just sort of throw it. Um, so they have Make Fat Friends, which is community building, which is burlesque. Belly dancers. I don't know if I want to do belly dancers at Fat Con. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of belly. Uh, fat, you can't sign up, though. Fat Liberation has trigger warning, so that's your Fat Liberation. It's weird because it doesn't say they're sold out, but if you try and buy tickets, it just says no longer available for all of them. Okay, so the trigger warnings say mentions of specific size, weight, or fat phobia. I think they all have something like that. Trigger warnings before and after photos, <laughs> diet culture. I mean, the whole thing is going to be everybody complaining and about, fat. about how their airline wouldn't give them a seatbelt extender. <laughs> like, the whole thing is going to be... Every, airline, yeah. yeah. It's going to be all airlines. A lot of people are going to have a gripe with the airline. Take up space with Sammy James. Take up space. <laughs> is pretty good <laughs> fat or swollen your self-care guide so you basically figure out if you're just sweat if you're fat you or might swollen. just be swollen <laughs> isn't that crazy you know this whole thing this might just be inflammation if they find out you're swollen <laughs> they probably turn on you you know what i mean if they find out you're just swollen yes yeah, she's not one of us <laughs> yeah they cannot be happy rope bondage so they have basically s- <laughs> that's a fucking weird one <laughs> feeling our fat and they have one course where you basically go in there and they just like they teach you to feel your belly and just to be like feel your belly good stuff right yeah, that's great <laughs> they dig into their bodies and so it's a bit of a weird stuff there trigger war- trigger warning there is internalized fat phobia detailed discussion of fat bodies <sighs> that's, yeah it's really uh seems really crappy do you think okay do you think that'd be too much if we do chuck and bucket fat <laughs> I mean, if they had any sense in them, they would fucking bring us in. To We'd do bring Chuck in Chuck and Buck, Buck as like uh, guests yeah, of honor. Yeah, guests of honor. We'd be like big celebrity guests, Chuck and Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Fatcon's nuts, though. We could. I'd that'd be funny to send you to Fatcon with a GoPro on the head, though. <laughs> Yeah, going good. to the feeling the body session going to the, feeling the belly? going to the nights of the fat round table 
<laughs> it's one of the events, four to five p.m. Uh, it's a po- oh, podcasting as well. Oh, they're actually look. They go podcasting is one of the last nuts. free speech ta- stages for the fierce fat community. Podcasting is free from the FCC trolls and Zuckbots, so they're big on free speech. I can't they imagine they are. They have a lot of trigger warning. I know, which is so weird. But they're all like, "Oh, we love free speech because we can talk about our fatness." And you're like, "Who is stopping you?" Dude, it was interesting. They did a, a study, or not a study. There was, sorry, there was an article this woman wrote, and basically it was an American woman went to Sydney, and she was like, "Everyone in Sydney's fat phobic and all this sort of stuff." And she was like, uh, basically said she's a travel blogger and did a big thing, basically being uh, oh, that no one will hit on her. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was so hard for me being there. And she goes, the "Guys, they'll hit on these other girls," and I never. And you go, "I watch these guys get uh, girls get asked their number, and no one would talk to me because I'm fat or whatever." And it was just like pretty funny, like an American going to everyone else, <laughs> like American. And going overseas and being like they hate fat people here just like it's like we don't really have any yeah they're like i mean i'm sure they have some i don't know if you've seen that thing that was going viral recently but it was like they had a, a fashion show and they had a plus size model and it was like this girl would have been like thin by today's standards what, uh, like an old plus size model yeah they had some like one of those like fashion shows and they had the plus size one and it was oh. like the plus size one you're like this looks like yeah an average woman nothing crazy here B- b- less oh like it was like she was smaller than your average now <laughs> Nice. It's bizarre. Yeah. But the internet is insane. Um, so I, one thing I just wanted to uh, play because I don't think I, I showed you this, but I've been kind of like obsessed with this thing. It's so funny. So there's this guy. He made this. Th- just the interesting ways you can make so much money just doing random shit on the internet. Yeah. This dude has this thing called. Um, Not the Mickey Mouse thing, is it? Hamster rave. Hamster rave. Yeah, I'll show you a little bit of this. So. So this guy he set up a hamster rave, right? The whole thing. <laughs> he has a bunch of hamsters. He has a camera live streaming on these hamsters. This guy's just making like so much money, right? Where does he make the money from? Uh, donations. Oh, don- well, you know what? There's um on YouTube. I actually saw there's someone has they made a, a weird like house for raccoons and they just have it's 24 7 live just like a raccoon probably house, making like a thousand bucks but, but they get super chats and stuff so people yes. super chat them just like all the so this guy did this but then his hamster rave thing and he's basically been doing these raves and some people don't like it because the hamsters fly off the thing and he goes no the hamster likes flying off yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. or whatever right there's a bit of a imagine how horrified you are you're just watching it and then just like you see like a snake come in or like some predator <laughs> Send a snake into the hamster. Yeah, he's just watching. Yeah, he goes. He goes. Uh, Timmy, fifty bucks, or I'm letting the snake in there. And oh, like, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> But the hamster rave guy, I thought it was so funny because basically the hamster rave went down for a couple of days and everyone was like on TikTok is like, where's the hamster rave been at, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then he posted, I just thought it was so funny that this guy does hamster rave and this is what he posted. He goes, I'm sorry that the hamster rave is not as good as it can be. I'm going through some tough times. It's very hard to be betrayed by your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Left without your daughter while you were away at work, eating, earning bread for them, uh, doing his hamster business. Yeah. Discarded after I moved mountains to be with her and fought battles for years that everyone would have given up. Some hamster oh, rave. So a hamster rave guy got his wife just left him in the at just dear John. And the hamster rave has suffered, but then after a couple of weeks, the hamster rave is back. Nice. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, yeah, but it's funny. He just like basically comes back out of nowhere and the crowd goes wild. Yeah, just yeah, a yeah. bunch of hamsters going, hamster rave is back. And by the way, hamster rave is back even better because he doesn't have to, he's got no kids, he's got no wife now, he's got 100% of his attention focused on the hamster rave. Yeah, he could really, really make that thing what it could truly be. Isn't that funny though? Shout out to hamster. So everyone sent me this. There's a bunch of new terms this year. New year, new terms. <sighs> <laughs> You're not happy with the new terms coming at you? I'm, I'm tired. L- with life and new terms come at you quick. I'm so tired. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm, the green, I'm green mile. I know. Guy. <laughs> I'm so tired with the new terms. What is abrosexual? Let me explain. As it took 30 years to realize my identity. So do you, oh, I guess you read it. So, you know, I don't have to guess what abrosexual is. It seems like it's bisexual to me. It does seem like it's that. honestly, you know what it seems like? It's bisexual, but you're just a little more annoying about it. 
It kind of does seem like, like isn't that, that like a pretty accurate description? He would well, you know what it. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what it is, abrosexuality is a, for the layman person's term, it simply means someone's sexuality identity fluctuates and changes. So it's basically bisexual, but they tell you when it changes. <laughs> yeah, so they I'm, give you I'm updates, bisexual, but I give you updates of which one I like. But sometimes right now. I'm just lesbian. Sometimes I'm just straight. But I'll let you know. Yeah, so bisexual. Yeah, bisexual. But but just, they give you updates more. Yeah, just annoying. And literally, the term was invented for kind of what you're saying, where she was like, I would give people updates, and they'd be like, Well, it sounds like you're just bi and she's like i'm not though right now i'm lesbian <clears throat> it is the ultimate in sexuality all of the sexualities at once you are abro this is not gender stuff I guess. you're right though they all are that because they're like it fluctuates you go so all of them yeah so all of them i know this well, that's like bi- sort of- that bisexual is because you're both but they're saying well i'm not both always <laughs> <laughs> They go. Just glad you didn't poke my eye out. They there. go. You're both. You go. Correction. Correction. I <laughs> was both, both. Yeah. and I will again be both. I wonder. Do they ever have like? Can they be? I go. I'm uh, like uh, no. Because I was gonna say, can you be like? I'm I'm straight and lesbian. And they go, you're bisexual. And they're like, no, I'm straight and lesbian. Basically, what they're doing. Zone thing. They're just saying they don't always happen simultaneously. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, and then they said. Uh, one day I felt like a lesbian Yet days or weeks later I felt more aligned with bisexuality My sexuality is fluid When I tell people I'm abrosexual I'm often greeted with a blank expression <laughs> Followed by a question With what the term means I think that you're probably often greeted with Check please <laughs> <laughs> Yeah that's a cool story But uh, <laughs> hey, didn't wake up early <laughs> it's funny, That's so funny thing. <laughs> She needed a new term Because she was great, greeted with a blank expression <laughs> Where'd you get that blank, blank expression on your face? <laughs> I'm looking Specials. at the blank, uh, the abrosexual flag. They have a flag. Um, yes, no, I, if you were on a date with a girl and she goes, oh, I should probably tell you I'm abrosexual. It's like, well, right now I'm into guys. Sometimes I'm just into girls. Sometimes into both. You go, yeah, no, for sure. You're calling it Uber <laughs> under the table. Honestly. Well, yeah. well, depending on how hot she is, you go, oh, this <laughs> might be okay. Um, a check, please. <laughs> uh, waiter, uh. No one was intentionally hurtful, but I'd get the occasional, yeah, but you said you were a lesbian last week. They didn't understand, and at the time, I didn't have the right words to explain herself, so she was getting friggin' pissed when she said that, right? Oh, she I goes, hate that. well, I'm bisexual, and she goes, I was with you yesterday, and you went on a fucking two-hour bender about how you're a lesbian yep. and how you hate men, and then she goes, and she was just sat there being like, <laughs> that was yesterday. She probably went, yeah, she went back to the lab, with, sat in the lab with the pen and the pad. Trying to get the damn label off, I ain't having that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. That's her. <laughs> this is bisexual without the math. <laughs> with the aftermath. <laughs> uh, this is a bisexual with the aftermath. <laughs> yep. yep. So she sat there with the pen and the pad, you know, all the different terms, like ripping up the f- crinkling the <laughs> crinkling the the thing, send throwing it in yeah, the garbage. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like doing the whole like in the basket and then trying to just but then she makes too many in a row and she goes, what, Oh, it might be straight. A, yeah, 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 lesbian, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I made a lot of row I guess I'm lesbian right now And that abrosexual She goes It's so fucking perfect It just might work <clears throat> um, She was wringing her she, she was definitely uh, Wringing her neck though Unhappy No one was intentionally hurtful um, But it's still hard to hear things like Mate you're just confused Or just say that you're bisexual And be done with it I refuse to be boxed in By someone else's limited knowledge So another person We could probably hire for the boys Guess this seems like Someone that would be A, yeah, a good hard working employee Yeah. Not problems, not problematic. She can be in charge of great men coordination as well. How well do you think? I'm sorry, I'm just. Uh, so this is the abrosexual flag, pretty crappy flag. But there's all these yeah. like flag companies that sell all the gay flags. They must be doing okay. Are they doing gangbusters? Well, they have like four million flags, like different designs. We should start an am- am- homosexual flag company. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we call that? Honestly, or make, just it- make Canadian flags. <laughs> <laughs> No, hold on. <laughs> Pretty good. You make leaves for the uh, Montreal Canadiens <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to make a homosexual <laughs> flag, why don't you just make it for the Habs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably do pretty good, though. A, a flag company. I, I, there must be one, and this is sort of like my dream. Maybe it'd be a funny movie or something, but like it would be just so funny if there was someone that was doing, you know, you were making like the Trump flags and the Biden flags and just doing like, yeah, like you said, gangbusters. Yeah. I mean, there obviously are a lot of flag manufacturers, but like the queer flags, that's pretty niche, I think. Because you have to know, like you got to be on top. Like it's easy to make like a, 
you know, country flag. But these things are just popping up fucking every day. There's a new one of these. That's weird. Like, that was the queer, uh, I guess, clear flag. Did you see the queer fag? Hey! <laughs> he showed a photo for the record of me. <laughs> I am the queer flag. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's this website. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's what happens when you get in the scope. <laughs> We got now I'm one. stuck on this queer in the world shop dot com website. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Your whole thing is going to be if a girl ever looked at your thing. She goes, "What are you even looking at?" <laughs> queer in the world, fat con, <laughs> queer flags. You guys, there's something you want to tell me? <laughs> yeah, got a wacky sense of humor. Were you, Danny, walking in there? <laughs> Two tickets to paradise. I got. Yeah. Um, so then that one And then they also said Sologami And uh, basically all those girls That were marrying themselves Now they that have That is one. like a real uh, I had never heard of that Even forever That's a recent thing Where women are like We're just marrying ourselves Yeah well they used to Just have cats And be done with That's it That's what I'm saying They didn't It was a shameful thing I think the internet said to the Because those people Were sort of like Listen I'm like 55 years old I'm just like some chick Like I'm by myself I'm on government assistance Potentially You know what I mean I don't really I'm not out in the world I have my one friend That yeah. I talk to I have my 45 cats Crochet But I think the internet said You need to be heard Yeah you need to be heard And like you're This is actually like a You need to be seen and heard heard yeah <clears throat> yeah well i don't know if this is there's something crazy about it in the majority of sologamy sol, sologamy sologamy stories in the media women not men are the ones uh slipping on the formal wear and throwing a self-marriage party so women are leading the trend it's a, wow <laughs> Right. Wow, that's uh, shocking. <laughs> what are the fucking odds twist. of that? What the uh, what on earth are the odds that women would be yeah, leading not the a lot of guys gummy? buying tuxedos to <laughs> marry themselves? What are the odds, my friend? Uh -huh. Monogamy might be the norm in cultures today, especially when it comes to marriage. But sologamy, often called self-marriage, offers an alternative for those who want to marry themselves. It used to be called le who <laughs> is a her. <laughs> they, we've actually replaced the term le who is a her. Uh, sologamy. Sologamy. So there's this girl. She married herself. 2022. Self-marriage is a commitment for there to being there for yourself to choose a livelihood, realizing and growing and blossoming that you're beautiful deeply happy person um deeply happy what i'm trying to whenever say whenever you have to tell yourself you're deeply happy you're not yeah exactly it's like you have to tell a girl you're deep inside of her <laughs> i'm really scratching that back again tell you the results just came out this is totally normal size i'm super deep inside of you based on the new york post <laughs> I'm deep inside the crevices. If, it, if you don't think it's deep, that's just fake news. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. I better put a fucking uh, scientific. I better put a mountain climbing helmet on this thing because I'm planning on going deep in there. I, I gotta get the ca the cave light. I'm caving. <laughs> I am deep inside of you. Do you think we're gonna start get on um like a, a trend of, of articles where these chicks are starting to divorce themselves? That's an interesting. Like, well, is that the next? You know what? You make step? it was kind of making me think because they're saying she goes. What I'm trying to do is accept myself, all of me, even the parts that don't look pretty. It's like these people. A lot of times, it's like they have obviously depression and all this. Yeah, every oh, illness, yeah, and you go. What, so they would be like going to their therapist being I hate myself and it was like well also I'm getting married to myself <laughs> so but like would they maybe meet a man and so they, it is traditional marriage they're just marrying someone that they, they hate, hate. Yep. but then do they maybe like meet a guy and then they're like oh, I gotta divorce myself because she's like I'm seeing somebody I'm married <laughs> and he goes what he's like I can't date a married woman <laughs> What's his name? And he goes, it's not a him. <laughs> You're a lesbian? She that is true. really. So oh, who are you married to? Did you just call me, me lesbian, you piece of shit? 80% <laughs> of the people whom I married to myself um, uh, shed a tear while reading their vows. Oh, that's even crazier, dude. Wow, reading your vows to yourself and crying? Yeah, that is totally something else. Hinged behavior. That is... It's very just normal... Yeah, encouraging this behavior is really nuts. You know what was kind of making me think of? We were talking about pickup artist stuff the other day, like what's a mystery and stuff like that up to. Yeah. Because they used to give tutorials. And uh, uh, I think Colin was telling me that his buddy or someone in Ireland like went to one and mm -hmm. he did a thing. But the funny part was um, he... He, he would give this uh, big speech and then he would go to the bar and show the guys his techniques or whatever. Yeah. But like, 
uh, he'd essentially like have girls there that he paid. Oh and shit! He was kind of saying like he'd have plants at the bar. Yeah, because it is hilarious if you like you almost have to because imagine you a guy pays two hundred dollars for your pickup artist cost. Yeah, you can. You just go to the bar and you strike out on that. There's like just like ten like fat dudes with like wacky hats on and he's just like, <laughs> can I get your number? She's like, get away from me! And he looks at them like, next one, we'll get yeah, the next one. one. Yeah, we'll get it. It's more of a process. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, right? But they're meeting greed is like you get to go watch him in the flesh trying to pick up chicks right but it's like imagine trying to pick up a girl where he's like who are those 45 guys watching this <laughs> remember that dude dimitri the lover that toronto guy no remember he, he he went viral like one of the first like very early viral videos like 10 years ago because you left that voicemail for that chick mm -hmm. like this really people some people might know what i'm talking about what was the voicemail the voicemail was like he's like so normally like i won't give you a second chance or whatever his name was you've never heard of this oh man this is like a classic i don't know dimitri the lover dimitri the lover yeah like if you uh and I th oh yeah and i think maybe we talked about him because he ended up going to jail but it's like uh he left this crazy viral voicemail for this chick about saying how he'll like give her another chance and all this stuff and it was like it was just like mental the kind of voicemail he's like normally like i wouldn't do this but and like is it because he was using all those techniques he was yeah he was a, he was a pickup artist he sold courses and he ended up going oh yeah and then he ended up getting in trouble for uh distributing his name is James Sears and then he ended up uh Get, handing out in like the East End in Toronto he was handing out like Nazi pamphlets and stuff like just dropping them at people's homes and all this stuff and then he ended up I, th I think he went to jail interesting yeah yeah well it's just kind of uh, he was a big pickup guy <clears throat> the thing that was like, there's so many um there's so many articles about like uh, and podcasts and everything about like pickup artists but it was kind of making me think it's like any dude one thing they never mention is and I know this maybe sounds like weird but like if you're any dude that I know that was like good at girls, right? Mm -hmm. It was like really the thing that immediately happens is you kind of are, uh, you're in that dilemma now where it's like your issue isn't like how to get more girls. Your issue like pretty quickly becomes like, oh, this is kind of shitty what I'm doing. Yeah, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you go, it's a thing Michael Jackson said, like you can't just go around breaking young girls' hearts, right? No. Because you do, like a lot of that stuff is you make girls fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. And then after doing that like a few times, you kind of realize like, this is rude. Yeah, it's rude. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's rude to like really sell the girl the dream and then she like falls for you and then you kind of like, you know, you can't do that. Like if you, you do, push if you, her to the way, so if you do that like 50 times, it becomes like sociopathic. You know Probably, what I mean? Yeah. Um, the, well, so it's like, really, it's almost like you either have to be like a guy that they, like, isn't or you just kind of, or, you know, from the outset, I guess you say, like you're just hey this is yes but if you're okay but if you're using the technique where you like make a girl really like fall for you yeah like and you're and you're like almost like a professional at this yeah yeah you are sure. you are almost like guys going to the basketball car just like dunking on kids yeah like if your car's getting keyed every like week kind of thing no you're not but well you're saying that, that you make him mad at you i'm saying that you're like it's like mean oh yeah it's mean but i'm saying yeah yeah but it's because they're so in love with you and then you're like yeah and, and yeah. then you kind of have your, I guess you can have your culpable deniability where you're like well I sort of told them that I wasn't looking for something and it was like yes but you also know how to like manipulate women that's into true. loving you and yeah. you did that and then now you know what I mean so it's kind of like I think a lot of times that's why a lot of guys like you either find a girl or you sort of you're very like careful with mm. you know what I mean because it just you can't just it really is like you can't just go around well, breaking girls hearts catching feelings though well yeah I, I just sort of, catching feelings so I think if you're good at if you're good with women it's a little bit on you to not be just like a complete Complete asshole. I guess, yeah. It's like rude. Use the force wisely. But they never talk. Yeah, they never talk about using the force wisely very often. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I'm just saying that, like, so many of my friends that were good with girls is like, I would say pretty quickly it becomes like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't get in too deep with this one. Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels like uh, shitty or whatever. Yeah. Most, uh, uh, this is kind of the, most of the guys that I know that are pretty good with women. You just feel bad a lot. <laughs> you're like, you're yeah. like, it's crap. Well, because, yeah. Because yeah, you're just sure. like, I know. You're just like constantly like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, yeah I know. It's like, honestly, I'm just not really looking I'm for something. Not really. <laughs> and if, if you can do that I mean, speech I used, over and over again and like feel nothing, it's like crazy. I had five, I probably for five years where I was just like, yeah, I just got out of a relationship. Yeah, you, yeah, you had your And then they'd be thing. like, when was that? And I was like, it was like pretty recently. But I'll and tell you like, what, when? And you like, probably don't totally manipulate them because you don't really pour it on that thick no, either, yeah, right? I no, I, I was like pretty not cold
cold, but I would definitely. You are a little bit cold. I would never be like, oh my god, I'm like, I fucking love. Like I never like love bomber. But yeah, like yeah, making people fall for you really quick involves like you gotta pour. Yeah, it on you gotta. A yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're well, we're going we're going on a vacation. <laughs> you always start planning that vacation. <laughs> yeah, that vacation. <laughs> Telling you it's happening. So there's this guy. Let's just we did a couple of the girl ones of the crazies, the solo gammies and stuff like that. So that we got a guy on our hands. All right. I've impregnated more than 180 women. Somehow I'm still single. Wow. <laughs> but it's this guy. He's a UK sperm donor, and he has 200 women that he's uh, he's and his whole thing is like no girls are open about that is this weird. Idea. Well, I don't know why chicks would really care about that because he's actually banging them oh <laughs> dude it's so I, I funny that part then <laughs> he goes it's hard for someone to find who can tolerate this lifestyle um and he simply goes by the name donor joe 51 he told the son of his ability inability to find love and his lifestyle but i just love the idea of a dude basically he's uh dating girls because he says he goes well sometimes i do it like this but sometimes it's natural he goes how many times is it natural most of them are natural what? well because he's unlicensed dude it's just an <laughs> like average 51 year old dude that just like finds girls on Craig, Craig, craigslist to bang and then he's like, girls can't handle the lifestyle. But how there that many chicks were willing to get inseminated? By well, I don't know else? how long his career is, but he's two. Yeah, he's at two hundred. God damn, good for him, man. How funny is that though? Telling your girl, like, you know, yeah, you, I know the yeah. lifestyle of my work's a little hard. You know, the lifestyle is you going to <laughs> girls' houses and banging them. He's not some insane hunk or anything either. That's what I'm saying. This guy cracked the system a little bit, but now he's trying to, you know, now he's trying to be like, oh, girls can't handle the lifestyle. So the lifestyle is you banging all these girls and getting to having kids with you. I mean, this is this, this, this <laughs> must be like a hundred and eighty ones. These are like, this guy's getting them past them. I think a lot of them might be like lesbos and stuff, but I think oh. it works better. Like I think if you go natural, it probably goes gets in there. You know, yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it gets right in Is there. Is that true? That's definitely what he's saying. He goes, <laughs> "That's his fucking sales pitch." He goes, "Yeah, it's just if you don't, <laughs> you definitely if you don't do it natural, then it uh, doesn't work as good, and you might have to just be back here." So it's. Just he probably definitely has some charts and graphs that, in, that, in, that tell you the percentages oh, yeah. of why if his actually D getting in there is better for you. Yeah. Well, also there's no money involved, right? Like you're just paying him. He still goes. He goes. Love the game. He goes. I I charge two hundred bucks to come bang you, and the clinic charges eight thousand dollars to get the sperm and transport the sperm. He's like, oh, that's a lot. He goes. Funny you should say that. There's there is actually another way. Yeah, he goes, a train ticket to Manchester is only sixty pounds. <laughs> it's kind of what he's saying. <laughs> We should actually mention, speaking of, yeah. um, me and Danny will officially be in London uh, next week. <laughs> and Dublin. And you know what? Actually, uh, I've already said this, but let's insert an actual like yeah, uh, yeah, we'll list of the tour since yeah. it's happening next week. I've been everywhere, man. Yeah. But uh, we'll be in London next week. And so Joe said the interested parties usually contact them through social media. The clients can choose artificial insemination or partial insemination or natural insemination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the natural insemination is the most effective. Oh, I told you. But some people are in a relationship where they feel that might cause trouble. Oh, sure. yeah, you think? So you'd prefer some? Isn't that crazy though that some people are like in a relationship, they want to have a kid, and then the girl just like bangs another guy. <laughs> Yeah, that's isn't that crazy. I love the the New York posts like little, they little add their little shit because it goes so they they uh, so they prefer to do an artificial insemination. The Sperminator explained. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of Shermanator. <laughs> the Shoyminator. You're a fucking news outlet. You just call this guy the Sperminator. Some of the some of the people that are in the industry aren't liking this. This one uh, uh, lawyer says he's really playing the role of God and he shouldn't play the role of God towards desperate women. Sounds like someone whose wife got art naturally inseminated. Hater. Sounds like a hater. Yeah, this guy's just hating the game, not the player. Yep. Hating the player, not the game. And their kids, family, and fertility. Expert and lawyer Stephen Page. But like, dude, can you imagine? You go, your job is this. You just go bang other girls. And he's saying, no girls want to deal with the lifestyle. The lifestyle. It's like when swingers say, like, are you about the lifestyle? Yeah. And the lifestyle means, will you bang my wife? <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, Even better than that, this guy, this girl goes, is my husband lying about having orgasms? And my husband and I have a good sex life, but I've noticed that more than often than not, he doesn't ejaculate, ejaculate during sex. He says he has orgasms, but I'm concerned that he's lying. Can a man orgasm without ejaculating? Does this also mean he's infertile? We're hoping to have kids in the next few years. And um, the basically the th answer came back that... 
a lot of guys it's trying it's to possible. say can do it yeah it's a dry i've never done that no and We're, some of them are saying it's delayed so sometimes it's same, some things guys will have a delayed one so it's like delayed you bang the girl and then you're <laughs> you're at work <laughs> on, on the, monday on the morning what <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the ugh. Isn't that crazy? That is kind of weird, yeah. I mean, probably the real answer is he's lying. Yeah, he's lying. He goes, he's just gross. and he's. Have you ever done that? What? Faked? Uh, once. Really? Yeah. I faked after before where the girl goes, did you? And I go, yeah. And then you, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think one time. But that was a... What happened? It was, uh, it was, I was living with my, uh... Uh, my girlfriend like in college or whatever and i had like literally just cranked one out like i'm talking like two minutes before and then she wanted to go and i was like i just you couldn't tell her that and i couldn't be like i just i was just I was like all right and then i was just like it's not happening and then i just faked it and then I, she was like did you weird do, did, like, you, like, did like, you do this stuff you go ah. yeah you have to you gotta put on the floor. Ah, you go oh, oh! <laughs> like super she goes no no not or and then I remember afterwards she's like just like I wasn't using a condom and then she's like there's nothing nothing there and I go <laughs> weird I have to do my patented move every time I go <laughs> 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 that's what I do every time <laughs> I always have to time the the, the Triple H water spin at the exact time. Woo! And then I remember she was like, "That's weird. Like, there's nothing in there." And I go, That's weird. That is weird. Because I mean, you saw all the stuff I just did. Kind of gave it to you pretty good, pretty good. So. Ah. <laughs> But I remember it was kind of awkward. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. It was like a day. It was a daytime rip too. I remember. Well, that's what I always do. <laughs> I do my. I have you Pavlovium condition them. So then when you, they hear, let's get ready to rumble, they yeah. know what happened, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you smell what the long. Because I remember too, it was like coming. I was in college, so like if if I just had like half an hour, I would have been fine. But it's just like it was literally like. Pfft. Well, that's when you have to dick around for a little bit. Yeah, I don't remember what, why the issue was. Well, I need to take a shower. You know Something. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I just thought that was really interesting that they said that there's a lot of guys that do do that. But I don't think that's what's happening with her husband. But they said it's delayed, uh, and that could be a bunch of different things: blocked sperm duct, nerve damage, side effects of medication, low T. So that's obviously not happening to you, my friend. If you thought that Danny is getting it, delayed, no, you got the wrong guy. Why do you think I'm sick all the time? Yeah, exactly, man. So, very interesting. There's a I'm little. Not actually sick. All didn't the even time, make that connection. Yeah, but I'm not actually sick all the, the time. The high T is lowering no, is, your immune. No, this is. I I actually saw. This, I've been reading some stuff, but no, it's like this is just. I I have out al- just perpetual allergies. That's what immune related. Oh, there you go. Maybe it is. All right. Johnson. Interesting. Danny's T is so high. It's too high. Yeah. Um, I want to ask your opinion on something. Um, yeah. so I've been hearing, obviously non-stop like articles on the news like whenever we're you know looking at the sites and everything looking at articles we're gonna do and stuff like that yeah there's you know and i know obviously this was big under trump too but they said seven hundred thousand illegal immigrants or in uh california are well, they're giving free, illegal free health care yeah but on top of that i've just seen article after article about like 20, 200,000 came in yesterday and then there was yeah, the whole insane. thing where they sent them all to Chicago and they're sending, they're sending them, them here. They're sending them to a block from where we are right now. Okay, so this is my question to you. Is it actually right now worse than it's ever been ever or is it yeah. like I'm being kind of conned where I'm seeing more articles? No, they released it? their, like the, the, you know, the border services agencies release their stats and stuff. So, well, how do they know the exact Well, because these are illegal because they appre- they're apprehensions, right? So. so why is it so much worse right now than ever before? Because there's a loophole in the system in the United States where if you claim you uh, America has a thing where they let if you're a refugee which is uh has like oh, was that me? no if you're a refugee like there's a legitimate thing here that's a fancy for those of you who don't know a refugee is a fancy refugee is a fancy yeah, yeah, yeah. what uh, no because refugee and you go are you a refugee you go no I'm a refugee refugee <laughs> yeah um but like if you're like escaping hardship America has uh, thing where they're like we will let 
like you know you into our country if you have like a, you know if you come from a country that's fucking so killed, they're coming, you're gonna get killed for living so in they're country. coming to say we're refugees so they come here but so the system is not supposed to work this way but currently the way it's set up is you come in you say i'm a, like a refugee i'm escaping whatever and they go sure you get a hearing right to determine whether you're actually allowed to stay okay the hearing right now is in like 2030 so they go you have a hearing but oh. and, but you get released into america while you get to await your hearing and i believe so it's like the perfect scam and i believe you can even get a work permit so couldn't canadians just do that just come yes in? so you could just come from anywhere and not, be like i'm escaping something and then they give you a hearing and then you this yeah, is that's yeah crazy. and so dude it's like because people go to the borders and stuff <clears throat> and everybody assumes you're like oh it's all central americans or like venezuelans because venezuelans are like legitimately escaping something that the united states government i think would allow them to stay some people are just like you know come from mexico and they just want to live in america and they're technically just like their economy is not great but i don't think it counts but then people come from china like people are literally full go of china and then they get a nine-year grace period they have this like and some people are probably like you know what i'll take my chances i have to marry an american yeah you can figure it out in the nine years you're here that's like better than the college permit yeah it's it's way better it's better than anything so it's just a loophole right now so people because yeah, like, they're like you're hearing you're like i've been married with three kids for four years well but b before like look you'll find someone to marry in those seven years and then you'll just live here legitimately and you'll be a u.s citizen but like if you're a chinese for example i don't know exactly no but i'm pretty sure you need to get a visa just to visit right like canadians don't need a visa you just so you're on the records you're on the records but also like it's a process like to even get it like there's no guarantee that you'll even get it it might take six yeah i remember months. raheel when we were gonna yeah, go to america remember? and he's like i can't he, come. we were gonna go on a trip to america and raheel can't come because he's from india and then from india you need, you need uh, a, like a specific a, visa a very like there. specific visa yeah <laughs> and it's like difficult to get it and it takes six months uh, it's the same thing uh you can't just pop on over there this comic raj here he said he's from india but he lives here and he, he's like he i he can't go to canada same thing it's like you just need this crazy visa or whatever so anyway they're just taking advantage of this loophole there's just like a loophole and they're taking advantage of okay it. that actually does clear it up for me because a part of me was just like i've no, like a, obviously from politics it's like a number one agenda so you kind of are like is it just getting laid on thick right now or is it actually worse than it's no, ever been there's just there's a loophole so, okay, it's such a so is it that more people know about the loophole like it's so public now that like words out that everyone can do this i think so yeah i think so because the thing is like, there why, are still why, people, so i guess there are my still question is coming, why is it worse than it was seven years ago uh because i think they processed you faster like you'd have like a year that's before why they saw you yeah and now okay. it's like it's the backlog is so insane and it's getting bigger by the day so they sort of like and they're created not enforcing the problem the that's hel helping them yeah but they're not enforcing the border like trump literally wanted to build the wall and now by you know they're yeah and obviously there's that stuff as well there's that yeah. stuff and then they hated trump so bad that they're like being like we're going to do the opposite of whatever he did so we're like let's let everybody in and then and there are still people who cross illegally who are not going through this uh like who do like the whole coyote thing and they come in here undocumented and they don't have this court date and that's out of hand as well like i don't know they're just completely overwhelmed it's such a crazy thing though because of all the of all the issues that um have, are crazy in the last six years it is this is like the wildest one where it really became like a partisan point to be like i think that people should be allowed to just cross the border and come here illegally yeah, and you're like a, a politician that would say that like no like obama or I mean, or uh, the country, any de you know no like liberal politician before would be like yeah i i think that we shouldn't have a border no it's cr i mean any sovereign country should be allowed to enforce their borders like that's just that seems, yeah, i mean obviously right but it just seems like crazy that this one became like just like such a i mean obviously there's the other part of it where people will say well they're trying to change the demographics of the voting base and all that sort of stuff yeah, but, like, but that's like I think it's more that it just became a thing and now they have to say it yeah like I never you know? I personally don't really it's like kind of like the pe we know people that would be you'd be like super you know PC Brooklyn person yeah. and, and you, someone would rob your house and you'd have to like be like I'm not gonna call the cops because I mean, literally that, that could be bad for girl them like, whose boyfriend was fucking stabbed yeah you just and she's like she basically doesn't want to like participate because she doesn't like she's, she's sympathetic to the guy who stabbed her boyfriend yeah they also have to change it to be like it's actually uh you go it's actually very progressive to want to have border guards <laughs>
I guess. You know, you, they have to convince them that, I don't know yeah, how you change that, but it's like it just became well, a it thing. Gets, well, I'll tell you how you change it. Is that just people, make it just enforce the law. No, it's, oh. I'll tell you how it changes. Is that the people who live in New York City and then they're like, hey, we're cutting back on the fucking police in New York City because of the southern border because you're a sanctuary city and then like resources in New York City are literally like running out because we have to finance these people. And, and then, then everyone's and then people in New York like, City okay, are like, enough's all enough's. right, let's do something federally because like we're getting impacted on the local but level. But they don't though. They just keep, it feels like they just keep sending them to Chicago and places like that and the people in Chicago go, can you believe these Texas people? And they go, well, then agree. But then that's stop. what I'm saying is the people in Chicago in these liberal cities are going to be like, okay, we're going to have to start voting federally for stuff that'll fix this because we're getting it. Do you think that happens? Probably. I mean, dude, if New York City, like, you know, they're closing the libraries, they're cutting back on, like, they're cutting back on social services in New York City because of a border problem in fucking Texas. Hmm. You know, like, but people, I guess everybody goes, you voted for it in New York City to be a sanctuary city and so you get what you deserve. But eventually people will, I guess, get tired of it and... I guess you'd think so at some point, but I guess some people would be like, "Well, at that rate, you know, what's the rate where it's like it doesn't, you know, you close it up ten years later, it doesn't matter, you know." Yeah, you got, it's like the, the leaky faucet, and you have the water damage. I mean, at it's some better point. to do something about it at some point, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but also, I like, so. it's like the people coming in. Probably, it's like such a weird thing that it became a partisan issue. Well, you know, I, I mean, this this country does somewhat rely on those people to live here. I just don't know what number of them. Well, no, I'm just mean the illegal component. Yeah, I'm talking about the illegal component, like you know, who work in kind of. Yeah, but table, you can't like, build a country based on like, oh, well, obviously we need a certain amount of that. Problem is, right? you don't know how many there are. So that's another thing. That's yeah, probably weird. Like it's probably like you know, I looked yesterday. The population of the U.S. is three thirty on paper, three hundred thirty million. But like, there's probably like seventy to a hundred million people here who they like are not on the books. Are when they say the population, they don't count. That's that? the census. No, that's just the census. They don't count it. So there's like it's probably like. A lot more than that. Interesting. Yeah, so. Okay, well, we're going to see you guys uh, across the pond next chip, week. Chip, chip, cheery. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to get that all out of my system before I go, so don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's going to be very fun. <laughs> yeah. Patreon.com slash the boys cast. We're probably going to do our competition when we're back because we're at like um, we, we reached the thing last month. Obviously, it goes down a bit at the first of the month, but uh, probably we'll be actually reaching our Patreon goal and doing our uh, eating competition. If you want to watch the last Bugman vs. Bugman half hour episode one of our me and Danny Killer. series, our reality show, it's on there now. So you can go Derek watch Drescher's the in first it, so one. Know him. Yeah, and our next one's going to be coming out soon because yeah. uh, it, and so it's been cooking. It's been cooking Big bonus, Bomba Cut Bonus episode every week Hot sexy girl And you Big want to give me head Big Bomba Cut Says you want to give me head <laughs> When I hit that buzzer That buzzer